Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Do you ever sometimes think I painted this thing and it's fully painted and fully based and I gave it away and the guy that won it turned out to be one of my friends and he's a decent guy and so because he doesn't play Ultramarines he plays Dark Angels and he's a decent guy I'm going to take that mini that I painted and from freehand and based and finished and did everything to and then they completely repaint one part of it. Does anybody else do that? Is, is, is that a normal thing to do? Because... I don't. <laughs> but apparently, that's what we're doing today. We're going to take this entirely finished model which is going to be on its way to Nick McDate, who won the Necron half of the Indomitus box and the Scorpet Lord. But because Viking is a boss and said, well, you know what? I'm just going to use them for like conversion and chop them up a bit. So I don't really want them. He agreed that he'd take the Necron mini that we painted so that Nick could have this guy for his Dark Angels army. And the only problem there is that 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 right there that this bit so there may be an involuntary twitch from time to time during this episode so we're, we're gonna take this painted mini it's finished perfect and then put some green paint on it. And uh, so here's, here's the first thing we're going to do. And this is going to shock and appall every, every single one of you and me. I, I will also be shocked and appalled. We're, 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 we're going to remove his backpack. Uh, and we're just going to deal with whatever fallout happens of removing his backpack after we've removed it. So... There we go. Ka-snap. Judo chalk. To be fair, we could have done the whole, like, uh, blood sport thing on that and dealt with it that way but some standards must be maintained let's put the backpack somewhere we can't lose it like over there on the keyboard it's on the keyboard there we go there we go so ordinarily you wouldn't do any of what we we're about to do you'd have done this beforehand but instead stuff and things uh, and what we're going to work on tonight is glazing because see how this shoulder pad goes lovely from this really dark blue up here all the way up to this nice nice bright blue through this seamless transition that we did with an airbrush that we could get away with because none of the shoulder pad trim was painted and it wasn't stuck to the rest of a mini which has got loads of bits we don't want to accidentally get green paint on that bit we're gonna glaze it. We do loads of glazes, loads of glazes, a million glazes. Which means, let me introduce you to my best friend today, which is Mr. Hairdryer. Now, Mr. Hairdryer is something that's gonna get used a lot to help speed up the process of creating those perfect blends. Now, despite the the fun side of what we're doing, the fact that we're gonna potentially ruin this miniature just so that I can paint it differently for a friend of mine, this is actually a really good stream because a lot of you ask me how do I glaze what's a glaze like really what, what, what am I doing is it how, how thin does my paint need to be what's the the technique for doing it I don't have an airbrush I can't afford one I can't fit one in my uh, painting studio you know I have nowhere that's not like a family area or something to paint in those sorts of things 
And so you have this. And this is it. This is your weapon that we're going to use to win the Glazing War. So, good evening to the chat. First off, we've got Commissar Bob, Berry Boy, Bat Sun, Crooked Grin, Viking, Odin's Wolf, Mr. Brutal, Farsias, Wooden Spoon, Jerry Drop Dead. Hey, 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 how you doing, man? Hope you've been thinking about what you're going to use that uh, three hour painting lesson on. Then we've got Mini Zerka as well, right there at the end. So when you're glazing, you absolutely have to have a game plan, right? You need to know where you're starting and where you're stopping and what your transitions in between are going to be. Uh, and sometimes, and this is what we're going to do this evening, your start point is going to be the middle. So instead of starting at the darkest shade and working up to the lightest shade, or painting the darkest shade and then glazing the lightest shade over and 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 over again to go from lightest to darkest with one color, we're going to start in the middle of this process with our mid tone. We're going to glaze that down. We're going to glaze that up. So we're going to go from that, that like center band then we put our shadows and our highlights in on top of that so to prepare ourselves for this we've got four paints we've got some black any old black this is throw our black from p3 because i prefer it to a bad and black it's less shiny it's got less of that satin thing going on which means that for a glaze where let's segue ever so slightly Normally, I just tell people grab black, grab green, get a, a green and a yellow mix, or you know whatever. Use light blue, dark blue, just a rough descriptor of the paint, because 99% of the time it doesn't fucking matter what you're using. Paint is paint. This is that one percent. This is where this is actually important. When you are creating a blend on a miniature, and we're going through this spectrum here, right? If this paint is quite glossy and this paint's quite matte and then these two are somewhat satin, what you'll have is shiny shadows, a flat mid-tone and a slightly shiny sort of extreme either side of that and that's not going to look right. Now you can save that after the fact by using some matte varnish to give everything one tone all over. But here's the thing, right? Seal this on here, these little grass tufts that we put on. If you spray that with a matte varnish, it looks really weird. You have to do all your varnishing before any of that happens. So what we could do, we could cling film around all of like this section and down, and then give this guy a hit of varnish, which is likely what we're going to do but we can just knock out some of that issue by just using the correct paints so i use thrama black from p3 because that's more matte than using a baden black from gw which is more of a satin medium to it so select your paints carefully and with consideration then work at your mid-tone. Well, somewhere these two are going to have to intersect and that's our mid-tone. So we're going to blend of these two. Then that is our mid-tone. We can work up using this paint and work down using this paint. And then we can mix both of those two in at either end as our highlight. So now we know what our plan is, let's prepare our palette. And this is super important when you're doing any kind of glazing work. So here's our palette. We've got half a palette. That should be enough. We need to do a little drop of each of these colors on here. So a little bit of black, a little bit of our Caliban green. Now you can use this technique to paint anything. Okay, maybe you just want to do some of that super cool, uh, like non metallic metal. Power armor, yeah, you, you've all seen that a lot on Instagram. 
Um, Hendarian, really, really good at that. Uh, Damien Pedley, very good at that. His blends are not as smooth. But he's doing like army painting instead of I'm going to paint one mini and have it look actually reflective. Um, maybe you're doing something like non metallic metal. Um, maybe you're painting power swords. So instead of using airbrush, you're painting this kind of effect by using a series of glazes. But what you want to do is you want to have access to every part of the little spectrum of color that you are putting out at any given moment because you're going to want to keep going back and forth and blend up and blend down and keep sort of moving that around till you've got yourself that nice smooth blend across the lot and the end goal for this is to have one armor panel that goes flawlessly from dark all the way up to light now fortunately we're only having to do one blend dark to light we're not having to do like on a, a power weapon we might have to go dark all up to light back to dark all up to light back to dark but the same technique applies you just keep building and building in both directions until you've got roughly what you want out of it so next thing let's go into what is a glaze in its uh, simplest form a glaze is very simply very thin paint that's that's it but here we go let's let's give you guys some very thin paint so we've taken a little bit of black on our palette let's take some water should have used some dirtier water but it's okay that's quite thin let's get some some water just for using black paint further down the palette out of the way and then let's add another brush full of water to this okay so that's really thin right everyone can agree that's that's really thin very boy you just put the uh, nail in the coffin right there this isn't really a glaze this is a wash we've got too much paint in our like too much uh, pigment in our suspension here so if we put this on we're still gonna get too much coverage so what you then do is you take from here go further down the palette and then you add more water and you want to get to a state where you can move essentially the entire thing around kind of as one Right, see how the whole thing's being dragged about by the brush? That kind of consistency. That's kind of what you're looking for. That's now a glaze. So if we were to take um oh my God, this will do. So these are the instructions for the Indomitus and stuff. What we'll do, we'll pop these on our desk. Instructions here. I'm probably going to remember that the Scorpec Lord has two hands that go together like that. We're going to take our first thinned coat of black that we had, and we're just going to put that over one of these. And then we're going to wash our brush out. I'm going to take some of this. And notice how that brush tip, still nice, perfect point. I'm going to put that over this. You see the difference between those two? Think about this. Every time you take a wash and you slap it all over like an entire miniature, that's how much effect that's having on the mini. Now I know we're on a flat surface and it's semi-porous because it's, it's paper. And so it's a more pronounced effect. But think about every single time you've ever just like, oh, I'm gonna paint fur. So here's some like brown fur color. Here's a brown wash. Whoosh! That's that's kind of what you've done right here. Glazing this. Now, one other thing to notice. Look on here how we've got these big coffee stain sort of watermarks. This is what happens with a glaze 
if you're not careful and you don't move it around the correct way. So glazing, as a very simple explanation, is take really thin paint and move it around on your miniature. But you can see how there's nuance to that out of what we've just done. All right, every part of the, uh, the process you need to be careful with because if you're not, you're not glazing, you're just painting with really thin paint. And at that stage, you're just doing it wrong. Oh, Timmy Spruce, just that host. Good evening to you too. So the next question is going to be, Jay, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you taking paint from here and then thinning it into there and then think why don't you just take less paint and put more water that is a damn good question when you're glazing and I use predominantly water for all of my uh, sort of wetting down of paint uh, it's cheap. It comes out of the tap on a readily available basis if you live somewhere in the first world. And it means that I'm not constantly buying things like glaze medium. Uh, I'm not constantly having to buy additional products, basically, to manufacture glazes with. But the difference between water and glaze medium is its evaporation point. We talk about this quite often when we're talking about things like uh, flow improver versus uh, airbrush thinners. We use flow improver because flow improver contains a drying retarder and we use thinner because it contains alcohol and one of those speeds up the drying time, that's the alcohol. The other one slows down the drying time the flow improver, the drying retarder. Water sits, despite the fact that it's alcohol free, such as life, shame, uh, water sits somewhere between the two camps, right? Um, it will speed up your drying time because it has a lower evaporation point than medium. So things like your flow improver. There's a higher evaporation point than things like thinner. But unfortunately, it's skewed closer to thinner than medium. So this will dry out because of how wet this is. This will dry out faster than this. And that makes fuck all sense, let's be honest. But the water in this is already starting to evaporate. Yeah, not quickly, just gently. Whereas the medium in this takes longer to evaporate. And therefore, this will stay wet longer than this. So this second row that we've got here, which is much less wet than our glazes, but a little bit more wet from here. This is our refill to the glaze, right? So each one of these glazes, when we start to run out or when they start to dry out a little bit, we take from here, add water, and we remix our glaze till we're happy with it, and then we go back and forth. So you need this kind of pattern, right? And it also means, and this is somewhat key, let's say I want to do a really dark line of a shadow. Well, I've got some black that we've been using to glaze in one area, but now I can just take this, which has got a little bit more control on it because it's thicker, it's easier to handle on the miniature, and not this, which is the opposite of that. It's much harder to handle on the miniature because it's runny. And I can just get that dark line in. So if you're doing, say, this power sword again, maybe you just want to take some of like the, the, the brightest blue and just lay it on there so you can blend outwards either way from that. Well, that's why you'd use this. You'd never use this. But you might use this to go on there instead. And I said right at the start, we're going to use our mid-tone first, and our mid-tone is going to be a mix of both of these. Now, I could glaze over this for just this side of forever and just about get rid of that U. So, 
there we go. Let's grab a little of this, a little of, uh, I don't want to mix that in there, let's just clean the brush, do it properly. A little of this, and we've got ourselves a mid-tone. Now, just to help speed things along a bit, we're going to grab a little of that, and a little of that. And then we're just going to thin that down so we've got a base paint. We're going to do two to three layers of this. So that we've always got a nice smooth base coat to go on. So, too many sprues? We'll have a quick recap. When glazing, lay your palette out. You put your paint down. All the colours you're going to use from darkest to lightest. No, it'll never be this colour on the shoulder pad, that's, that's too bright. We're gonna just wanna just kind of uh, influence our green a little bit with this before going back over it with that one. So you, you've got your colors ready. You make washes out of each color, then you take from the wash, add more water, and you create your glazes. Does all that make sense to people? If you've got any questions, now is the time before we start getting on with the mini. Now obviously you've got a lot of water in your palette, be careful when moving it around. If you tilt it, you've lost all your glazes. That's the end of that. Night Haunter, T, thank you for the follow. Now, for all of you that are not normally here, exclamation point win and exclamation point mystery, because whilst we have spent quite a substantial sum on postage alone today to send out all the prizes from the weekend, We've still got more prizes this month. You could win a £50 hobby voucher to the hobby stockist of your choice. And you could win a mini painted by me in the colour scheme of your choice. This month, there are three minis on offer as usual. One of them is this amazing looking Blood Bowl Minotaur. This is a fucking sick miniature. I absolutely love it. Loads of skin tones, loads of fun things you can do. We've got some really cool flat armor panels. Again, loads of fun. If you enjoy Blood Bowl, you're going to want this guy. If you play Sigma, you can probably find a use for this guy. If you play D&D &D or something similar, again, you can probably find a use for this. The next one on the deck is this Chaos Obliterator, which is great because they still cost £65 for two of them and a shitload of other stuff that you probably didn't want. So we'll paint this guy in the Legion of your choice. Give him a nice funky base. He could be on his way to you. And if you don't fancy either of those two things, but you still win, then you could take home the contents of the mystery box. In this box is a miniature. The only rule is it has to fit within the box. Now the box is nearly meathead sized. So there's a, a large enough miniature that can go in there. Uh, I know you can fit an Armageddon Halvern in there, for instance. You could fit things like uh, limited edition miniatures, uh, Titan Legion stuff, uh, or whatever it's called these days, uh, Warcry stuff, Sigma stuff, 40k stuff. There could be any manner of cool things in there. We've got a load of cool shit right here behind me that could be in the mystery box. But equally, it could also be a bit of a booby prize it could be a single scarab and not the cool new funky looking dudes i mean like the flying dorito that it used to be channel of ski thank you for that follow so all of these contests are going on they will be drawn on thursday night so nothing needed from you guys until thursday then on thursday make sure you're here spend your meeps by the way, those of you who got gifted subs over the weekend, I still haven't given you your meeps. You will have them by Thursday, which is when it matters. So don't worry. There's plenty of time for that. Let's get on with it, because we're going to spend forever messing around with tiny bits of paint. And then we're going to paint a freehand Dark Angel symbol on here, which is going to take at least 45 minutes. So you can see how thin this paint is and we're applying it so that's too much let's just thicken this up a touch otherwise it'll take an hour and a half just to get a base coat down and ain't nobody got time for that shit windy how you doing bud 
And this is going to take several coats because we're going to want to get a nice solid coverage of green to use as our mid-tone to blend up and down with and covering that bright white ink for that ultramarine symbol is going to be what is technically known in the business as a complete bastard which is right now how I feel about my friend Nick so now we've got an alpha marine perhaps a little turquoise I'm doing good dude oh holy shit Nidge he's like let me give some subs boom I've got you remember these will go before Thursday onto your account you will get your meeps so we've got Blade Mark, Squeeze Ill, Haunted Spartan 1, Fricker Friggy, and Kingfisher Games all getting a sub, courtesy of Nidge82. Uh, Milo, you only spend them on the last stream day of the month, which is Thursday night. So do not worry about it for now, but be here on Thursday so you can spend your meeps and enter that contest. Both of them. The free mini is subscriber only. However, most people in the chat are subscribers. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so Viking asks, Jade Mo Yellow Mohawk Clan, what slash how is your night army looking in 2,000 points? Uh, my night army is currently one army ashore, which is what we're going to be working on over the next couple of streams so that I can get that ready for an event I'm running and playing in on the 9th of August. 9th of August, we're playing 9th edition. It is an omen. It was meant to be. Uh, but my list is very simple. It's actually the list I wanted to play in 8th, but I just couldn't deal with the fact that I was about 80 points short. Uh, and because I'll only ever play pure knights, I won't play them with suit. Um, I just couldn't reconcile that in my head. But I always thought it was the best list that you could possibly run as a knight player. And that was three knight crusaders and three hellbrings. And now they've changed the points. My previous 2,000 point list, which is... Uh, sorry, which was, rather, I should say. Uh, it was three Night Crusaders, a Paladin with the uh, Icarus guns, and two sorry, and one Helverin has now changed to that list. Always play House Crest. Always play House Crest because it means your Gunboat Knights, those Crusaders, which are the best unit in the Codex are both good at range and in melee. Never, ever, ever take melee knights because they're just no good. Oh, Blade Mark! Continuing his gift sub. Oh wait, no, that was the gift sub. Gotcha, that was the gift sub that he got that he's saying, hey, Nidge, you're an absolute boss, man. Thank you, really appreciate it. I'm gonna do one more coat still of this. We're still not quite at a level where I'm happy that we've got everything super smooth. So this is the fourth coat, just to cover over our ultramarine symbol and that beautiful blue that we had. There we go. Now it's a dark angel, done. Video over, go home everyone. Nothing to see here. Boom. To be fair, he already looks better. That's that's that. So, one second. That's not quite dry. See a little point. Glazes is usually all about patience. It just takes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to blend in our shadows because it's easier. I got, I got nothing on that. It's just, this is easier. 
The very first thing I'm going to do, though, is we're going to take some of our black glaze, which will not be the uh, the transition color on this, and we're just going to put in a little marker for where we want our shadow to be. This is uh, like a sketch. Now I'm using the glaze rather than the wash for this because I just want to see what it looks like first. But you could definitely just go with the wash for this sort of coat. And something to notice is that we are always going to be moving the brush in the direction that we want the blend to go. So from the point of lowest impact on the miniature to the point of greatest impact on the miniature. We talked about that a lot at the weekend. Is this value sketching? Yes, but sort of no. The reason I say that is because we are changing the values into uh, less of a... Oh, dude, thank you very much. MC Schrander, absolute boss. Whilst we are changing the value of what we're doing, we're still putting down what will be the final product. So you see a lot of times people just take white, they'll thin it absolutely right down, and they'll paint all of the mini with white. You wish I had a pack, uh, to be honest mate, you've seen it. It's gonna look exactly like this for the rest of the stream until we get to the painting just white, and then it will be thrown away and we'll start a new one. Um, so normally with value sketching, you're painting something that you have the full intention of going back over and coloring it in. Whereas with this, we don't. We know that this is gonna be the darkest point. So let's just start glazing that in. Grab the hairdryer. No one's got time to watch paint dry. That's, that's a fact. Time, time is, is a short surprise, people. But you can see that how with just that, whilst it's very rough and we can see that edge, that's already given us a nice shadow from one angle. So if you just wanted to do a little bit of practice and just roughly glazing some shadows, glazing some highlights, you could do it like that and call it done and that's the end of it. But here we obviously don't really want to settle for anything. Now, another thing to remember is that we won't be wet blending. Okay, there's a difference between wet blending your highlights and your glazes and doing what we're doing today, which is glazed layering, where we're layering one coat of paint on top of another one. It's very transparent paint, and that's gonna allow us to have that transition from one to the other. So let's grab some of our Dank Angles Green glaze. That's way too much on the brush. Is licking your brush healthy? No. Neither, to be fair, is eating a lot of red meat and drinking alcohol. Smoking cigars. Neither is the 21st century. And so, you know, I'll, I'll just wing it. Broccoli's healthy. There you go. I ate broccoli for dinner. I eat broccoli a lot. I like broccoli. So now I've got some of that Caliban green. We know it's darker than this shade here, but we know it's not as dark as that. So we're going to start off by glazing down into our dark shade. So the, the black glaze that we've done. And then when we get to the point where we want that to start transitioning up, then we're going to go the other way and draw from the black up into that green. So our point where we want the brush to leave the mini it's kind of the middle point along that line. I'm gonna do this many times. Just hydrating, it's all good. There's, there's ice in there. There's lime juice in there. Technically speaking, there's orange and, you know, uh, like cactus juice. Cactus juice has gotta be healthy, right? Lime juice, from, it's, we're painting green. So again, start blending that Dark Angel's green mix down and then blend it up back towards where we want our transition to be. 
do this again. Probably too much next to the microphone. But... There we go. So now it's starting to get a little of that green showing through. You can see right down here, it's basically just black. We still got that very definite shadow, and that's what we're starting to work out now. So we'll uh, bring even more Caliban green down. And then blend back up like so. And it's gonna be a lot of the hairdryer. That's that's just what we're doing. Because otherwise all, all that really happens is you sit here going, oh it's not dry yet. It's still not quite dry. Pixel, I have had some chance to rest. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I very, very, very nearly called the stream off today because I'm fucking hanging. I went from painting all weekend, which is exhausting. Uh, I, I love it. I, I enjoy it. I love the weekend streams that we do. They're great. But you've got to be, like, on for the weekend. Uh, which means you can't sit there and just like veg out. You've got to be full energy all the time. And I, like me in real life and me here on the stream is only different in the way that I tell worst jokes off stream. I don't mean worse as in they're not funny. I mean, Frankie Boyle ain't got shit on me sometimes. And so... I can't say things like that on stream because whilst they may be funny, they're also things that probably shouldn't ever be said. Uh, and as a consequence of that, I will respect the fact that people will be greatly offended by some of the remarks that I would make and keep that shit to myself. That's the only difference, really. But on the stream, you've got to turn it up to 11. And... Of course, that means <laughs> the tank is empty <laughs> quite quick. Uh, yes, this was a Smurf on the weekend. Actually, I, I repaint. I just painted another one of these today. Twenty-five minutes, just bam, done. We already knew how to do it. We just crushed it out. Um, don't go back to start the video and fact check that because you would be unsurprised. Uh, but now look, we're starting to get some of that line disappear. We've got black right down here, and we've got some dark green here, and it goes to light green here. And from a distance, it looks fairly natural. It's only when you get really close in that you can see, yeah, you've still got like a, a bruise almost. It's just like a blemish. It's too, too stark of a line. So what we're going to do now is going to start taking our mid-tone and try to glaze out that there. Nothing to pinch you apart from boy bands. Is Blink 182 a boy band? Is Rancid a boy band? Sex Pistols, they were a boy band, right? So this is the, um, what do they call it? Warpstone Glow. I'm gonna take that from above our midpoint and blend down and then from here and blend up. See those little dots of paint that we're leaving? We need to get those right in the middle of this line. That's that thick point of paint we keep talking about when you glaze. In fact, you can definitely see them on camera right there. Little bastards, every one of them. Pixel, I think you probably definitely should. Because this is one of those videos that uh, someone has done better elsewhere. I guarantee you. There's like a 15 minute concise video on here's how you glaze. And someone like Marco has either done or will do a video on here's the science between glazing and why you thin your paint a certain way and why you work them a certain way. This is just how I do it. And I find that a lot of times because people generally watch those videos and like, I, I have no fucking idea how this actually works in the real world now. I, this guy's told me uh, to do this and to not do this and then also to occasionally do this, uh, but I, I don't get it. I find that sometimes my way just works 
in terms of teaching people, just why we we're thinking about doing those classes and why we gave some away at the weekend, because I explain things a different way. So, come on, Bob. Peace out, man. And then we keep going on with this. Now we're gonna actually start glazing this all the way down from the top, I think. Because that top section is gonna be brighter anyway. We may as well lay ourselves a nice foundation of that. But remember, once you've done that, always glaze back up. And then try and eliminate those little dots of paint if you can. So that looks fairly messy from here. Uh, Brian! Thank you very much for that follow. I really shouldn't be using a hairdryer right next to my trying to stay cold drink. So let me move this delicious uh, lime juice based drink over there. So you can see brush strokes. Yeah, you can see see all these little dots here where they've kind of left uh, that little watermark on the mini. We need to still smooth those out. Uh, one of the only ways of doing that is by putting a very, very, very small amount of paint on the brush so that you minimize those and going back and forth with your glazing. So we're gonna call that the last coat of our Warpstone Glow for a while. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to reglaze in some of our darker green to help that blend move up. So let's grab some more of that Caliban green. And now we're just going to glaze again. That's too much paint on the brush. Just, just saw the... Uh, the bristles just pop apart a little bit there at the end. So we glaze down again here. And we glaze up again. And again. Up again. Let that go. Glazing is always back and forth, right? It's impossible. It's impossible using this kind of technique to create a perfect blend without that back and forth process. Um, if you are, there's a guy who is on Instagram, his name's on the tip of my tongue. He does the most incredible non-metallic golds. Uh, No, I'll, I'll get it. it. It will come to my head. Um, and he does it through stippling. So he, he just takes a, the side of the tip of his brush and he's just dip, 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 And then he'll change colour and then he'll just keep going and he'll change colour. And, and the next thing you know, you've gone from like, I don't understand this, to holy shit, it's gold. And it's that quick, the, the change. It's, it's insanity. Painted a Custodes Dreadnought that actually looks like it's made of gold. Uh, it's not Preacher 40k, no. It's uh, the incident F. It's, so it's something like... It's a name that sounds like fire, but it isn't fire. It's like another word for something that's... Flame on painting. Flame on miniatures. Something like that. Fuck. Let me Instagram this guy now. He's, he doesn't use glazes. Uh, he's using glazes, but he's stippling with them. Flame on miniatures. Please be this guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check this out. So, uh, that dude he's got with the red light, just there on the right hand side of our screen, 
that looks like he's taken some actual aluminium foil and somehow coated that miniature in it. And it's all through. It's fucking insanity. Absolute insanity. His Custo Dreadnought. Well, look at that. Yeah, like this. It's something else. Here you are. Have we got a full shot of it yet? Did he ever finish it? I think he ever finished it. You must have finished it, because... Hobby boner, right there. Fucking insanity. Fucking insanity. That's all non metallic metal. Not a single drop of true metallics anywhere on that. Right, so now we start glazing in that lower color, that darker green again, to bring back this transition point. How do I pronounce that without just saying the word shit? Tist, tish, tisht. I'd like to buy a vowel, please. I've, I've murdered your name, like absolutely murdered on it, but you know. Uh, he needs to find a bird or buy a TV. Yeah, I know, I know, right? But this little, this little line just through here now, where we've blended back up over our mid-tone green that we were using and come back down just to help smooth that out it means that we've now got that nice blend impact between our black and our mid-tone and there's a lot of that that's going to happen over the next we'll call it maybe 40 minutes we'll, we'll see but that's how you fix your brush strokes when you've uh when you put a blend on something when you've got a little bit of wash you obviously try and avoid them as and where you can but that's how you fix them and then, like we were saying a lot of the weekend, you put your brush on the mini at the point of the least impact that you want it to have. And take it off at the point where you want the most impact to be. So that's why we're working in two different directions here, right? We're coming down with our highlight over the shoulder pad because we want the mid-tone to be here. So when we lift that paintbrush off, those tiny little dots that we're getting, uh, just got some highly some relevant games. We're gonna do some good engine kills. See you in the tournaments next year. Oh, dude, dude, I would love to play Harlequins. Nobody around here plays Harlequins. I'd love to give them a go. But again, immediately we've got that that very uh, rough line along here. So again, it goes back to grabbing some of that darker color and then bringing down over the bright color towards the darkness with that so when it goes on the mini that's the lowest point of impact when it comes off the mini that's the highest point of impact that helps blur out that line uh, always painting to the darker point is great if you're painting shadows but if you're painting a highlight that doesn't work so the way that I've started to think about it and the way I tried to teach you guys is the Minute the, the, like the lowest point of impact. So I'm going to apply right now a brighter green. I want the brighter green to be here. I don't want the brighter green to be here. So this is the uh, highest point of impact if we paint that way up the model because our brush comes off there. And this is the lowest point of impact because we're putting the smallest amount of paint on there and we're dragging that paint away from that area. So does that make sense? Is anyone still unsure of why we're we're doing it that way? I'll try and find another way to explain if I can. But I'll show you guys again. We'll turn them upside down this way because it's easier for me. We've got that very definite line here. Uh, crazy Anked! That's four months, man. Tempest fuck it and all that. We put the brush on here, away from that line, and we draw that up the mini from the lowest point of impact, which is right down here in that dark shade, up past that join line towards the brightest point of the mini, which is up here. So the lowest point of impact to the highest point of impact. Uh, 
and the next time anyone says, oh, why do you, why do you use an airbrush? Why didn't you just use a brush like a normal painter? Like, I don't understand it. Why, why would you airbrush, bro? I'm going to link this video to them and say, well, at the weekend I did this in three minutes with an airbrush. We're 15 minutes into a video now. Paint the shoulder pad. Right, let's go wild. Let's get some of that necrotite green. Let's go for our super brightest point, and then we can work out where we need to get our blend to. You don't necessarily paint over all the green. You can do, but you don't need to. So here we're gonna paint from about here upwards. This is our necrotite green. That's that super bright yellowy green. And bring that all the way up. Collect those little dots if we can. Dry that and then we'll keep going with that for a few minutes until we get something that we are happy with for our brightest shade of green. And notice how we're being kind of rough with it down here. We don't know where we want our point of blend to be yet. So let's just see what happens. Maladeus! How's it going, brother? You need to practice your airbrush? Yeah, definitely just airbrush this shit. It'll save you about 100 years. Three coats of glaze down. That's four. Notice how I haven't refilled the paint from my brush, by the way. That's that's how little paint you want to put on the money. That's five. My desk, that's awesome. Just make sure that you both I sincerely mean this. You both take care of it and both clean it. Otherwise it's like Bro, you didn't clean the airbrush. Well, it was your turn. It wasn't my turn. We had a rotor. We talked about this last week, bro. All right. You don't... You, no, just fucking use it. Clean it straight away. Done. Uh, yeah, leftover sprues. Things like armor panels from Rhino. Spare Marines. Everyone's got some sort of shitty miniature they don't want anymore, right? Okay, if we turn this away, look at how rough that is. We knew that was going to be a, a thing that happened. Is this the right color yet? Mm. It's getting there, it's kind of as bright as we want it, but it's a little bit rough itself. So let's just smooth that out now. So let's take a little bit more paint. And in this little area here, this is what we want to be hitting with our glazes right now. So we'll bring our little droplets to water. And we'll try and collect them in this top corner and let them sit on there, because that's our brightest point. Darker, no, 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 not fallen, dank angle. So we just try to smooth out that one area. Fucking Duncan Rhodes with his two thin coats. Bug. I will raise you 2,000 thin coats. That's, that's where we're at. So all those golden demon winners that glaze everything, this is this is what they do. Hey Sarah, how's it going? Yes. Yeah, two thousand thin coats. That's that's how you glaze. Why do you think so many pro painters were like contrast paint is not the answer, people? It's not smooth. It's not smooth. Look look at it. Really, really look at it. Got this big fucking lump here, this big hole where it's not smooth. 
we've got that definite line in there because we haven't smoothed out that into our mid-tone yet. Fine for tabletop. Bro, paint it green. Stick a transfer on. That's fine for tabletop. Uh, for some reason, that's not what we're doing here. So now what I'm trying to do is trying to leave those little dots in that triangle. That's kind of out of spot. That's a little green spot out of spot. You're playing there, bro, so you're watching me paint. I will show you the right now. Couldn't see that the back, but the middle is a bit hard to see. Okay. Can you see it there, where you've got that green that immediately just comes in with no like introduction, it's just like, bam, it's there. Excited to see if instant paints are any better. Instant paint. Is that what you're calling contrast or is that something else I am unaware of? It's more paint. And the glaze, that little necrotite green glaze that we've got, I decided that we needed thinner, so we're going even thinner. Scale instant paint. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I have heard about these. I um, I'm interested to try it, but I still reserve the sort of like mm, that I have for all contrast paint. Hey, Ring Sting, he's getting a sub going on. Just so you're aware, all your planes. Airbrushed. Uh, Waffle Craft, because it's only one sub, I'll give you your meeps now. Uh, Waffle Craft. There you go. Bam, you're in, man. 3k for two. What I'm doing now is just trying to position those little dots in there to start building up the thickness in that area. What are meats? Uh, so meats are our in-stream currency and they are pointless apart from one day of the month every month which this month is Tuesday. So exclamation point win and exclamation point mystery. It's a camera wall. This will tell you all about what uh, meeps are used for, and both of them will tell you why it's cool to be a sub here. If you subscribe, we give you 3,000 meeps. If you give the sub, both you and the, uh, the person receiving that subscription get 3,000 meeps. And that could turn into a £50 hobby voucher. Uh, Wafflecraft, you're given meeps because Ringsting69 gave you a subscription. And so because you are now a subscriber, there you go. And you can see how repetitive this is. But this is what we've got to do because we're repainting an entirely painted miniature. So that I can punch Nick in the head. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's all we got. <laughs> Uh, the chapter of the company color on the shoulder. So yeah, it's one shoulder pad is the chapter color. This guy doesn't have another shoulder pad because he gets in the way of his mighty sword. Um, apparently is the, the rules behind that. But yeah, they get one color, one colored shoulder pad. And that's, now you're a dark angel. Now you're a, a space wolf. Weather. Sarah, you should definitely enter the giveaways. Because A, 
you need some more hobby supplies, and two, you could do with some more painted minis to just sort of put in your rival crafts uh, display. So now we've got a nice super bright green at one end of this, and we've got this kind of mess between here and here, and then we've got this nice shadow going on down here. So what we need to do now is take this green and move it into this area. And the way to do that is to go back to our warpstone glow. And we need to work the other way now. So now we're pulling down away from the green, lowest impact to highest impact. So the brush goes this way now. Lazar! How you doing, Lars? We are painting green and we're glazing by hand and not using an airbrush for once. This will be an airbrush free stream. I can't allow it to happen. Just wave it around a bit. There you go. So magic has happened and now they blend. That's how airbrushing works, right? According to everyone that's never used one. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, jumping a gun, I know, but how would you make the insignia fit with the glazing? Well, you're painting bright white over this, uh, and so all you've got to do, and unfortunately, I actually mean this, but all you've got to do is not fuck up at all once ever in the process of doing that freehand, which is unlikely. But now you can see how we're starting to get back towards that mid-tone. Still a little bit messy. But it's starting to happen. And this is why it's really important that we do this back and forth. Yeah, I'm great at freehand. And, you know, we're just painting something super simple. It's only a sword with some wings, right? I mean, that that sounds easy, yeah? Nick, if you're watching and you're on your bike, then keep pedaling because you're going to need to be really, really fit to get away from the anger they have at you right now. Uh, yes, I totally agree. It would be better to use a transfer. Games Workshop produces some amazing decals, and you could just use those. But I'm trying to get better at my freehand. And if you go back to the start of the video and you see that beautiful Ultramarine symbol we had on here, it's getting there. It's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but it's getting there. It needs work. But we say this almost every stream every single time you use your brush or your airbrush or your basing materials or whatever else it is you're doing involving your toy soldiers and some art style things you are giving yourself an opportunity to learn every brush stroke try and make as perfect as possible uh, give me a fish to count yourself lucky. Yeah, fuck that, I ain't doing that again. That was bad. Well, no, I need to do that again, because that was bad and we need to improve. Um, but every single time you put paint on a miniature, you are giving yourself the facility to be better than you were the day before. And that's a great thing. So let's keep going. Me and Splat, it's not going to happen, dude. Don't. Don't come here with this negative, negative Nelly bullshit, all right? It's not gonna happen, we're not gonna mess up. We're gonna be completely flawless and we'll do it blindfolded too, if you need. Um, that's not happening, disclaimer, uh, that was a lie. Me though, that's absolutely the right thing to do. 
train your free hand on stuff like just drawing it to begin with, like pen and paper. And then... Oh, no, no. There, there are ways, dude. There are ways. But all you've got to do is keep tracing that shoulder. If I've got a brightest green, now I'm going to go back the other way. We glaze over our mid-tone, up the mini. Uh, it's far easier to freehand on the flat surface. Yes, it is. That's why you start off by doing it on a piece of paper. Then you get that piece of paper, you wrap it around a Coke can, and you do it again and again and again, because then you've got that curved surface. And you can just keep, keep going. <laughs> it's when you said, further up, what happens if you mess up? Don't bring that negativity. We're not going to mess up. I mean, we totally are. And I'll show you how to fix it. Um, now we're getting close. We've got a little bit up here that needs to be fixed. We've got a little bit here that needs to be fixed. Because right now we've got dark green, mid green, light green. And that's, that's kind of it. So... Let's just keep going with these glazes. Let's work down into that mid-tone again. That was a lot too much paint on the brush. And then you just keep doing that. I know, mate, I know, I'm taking a piss. Sorry if the humor sometimes doesn't translate, but you know. This is my way. So now working up from the underside, down from the top side, because our midpoint is squarely here, and that's where we want that to be. Your human never translates, all right. Oh, this, this is not Vikings. But Viking was an absolute boss and said, you know what? Nick paints Marine. Nick plays Marines. I only want the Marines for like conversions and stuff. So why don't you let Nick have this and I'll take the Necron. I'm paraphrasing quite gigantically, but it was somewhere close to that. Uh, now that's relatively passable. A little bit bright still here at the top. We're going to glaze that down a little bit further. And we're just going to glaze our shadows in a little bit. But you can see how that's starting to get to that stage where you could be happy with that. But it's not perfect. Uh, Ziar. What's the best way to pronounce your name? Can you phonetically type that out for me? Because I am dyslexic and I find that tricky, that first bit. Uh, Nerzaday. Um, so, serious question, would you try and glaze the insignia? Like, move from a brighter white on the upper end of the pole drawn and then transition down to a less bright white along the bottom? Zaya, thank you. Uh, Zaya is what we'll, we'll call you for now, if that's okay. Uh, so, you mean go from like white to grey? You can, definitely. I'm not, because it's going to take long enough anyway. Uh, well, fuck it. We might. We might. We might. We should do it. Let's just do it. So, let's continue on with our glazes. And again, it's a case of move down towards that midpoint. Just want to darken up a little of the top part of this shoulder pad. Just a touch. Would you glaze a black shoulder pad? Yeah, man. Black isn't black. Black on a miniature isn't black. So, this guy's got black armor. True or false? You tell me. Black armor or no? So we've got 
It is a trick question. You're absolutely right. We've got lots of yeses. Yes, but black isn't black, which is what I've just said. Uh, bit pale purple at the bottom. We've got that as an option. Gray, blue, purple, tons of shades. It's black, but the paint isn't. That's actually the best answer. This is something we talk about frequently is that everything you do in a miniature is an optical illusion. The, the sort of light that we're painting on this isn't because because it's even from this way up that the highlights still under there, right? All of this is a optical illusion. That highlight isn't a highlight because now it's now it's in shadow, so it's not a highlight, right? This black is actually a very, very strange shade of blue that's then highlighted with gray and then darkened back down with black. So if you were to take, the, take a photo of this and go to Photoshop and like do the color picker on all the different things and mark out all of those colors, Emil from Squidmar does this a lot and it's great to see it. I, I think it's a brilliant, uh, brilliant tool. You might notice that this is nearly black, but it isn't quite. And then this is actually a very pale blue. Um, and th this little highlight around his uh, gorget, his neck armor, is um, a very, very pale blue gray. But overall, it looks like black. But it isn't black. So question was would you glaze black the answer is yes because you wouldn't be painting black you'd be painting other colors on top of it to give it the effect of uh, next time you're out and about look out your window whatever if you see a black car really think about what you're seeing you're not really seeing a black car you're seeing some bits of light that are reflecting off of a black car that might be gray and so on and so forth so it's uh it's different uh, Vallejo gold is really good, but scale 75 gold is the best gold I've ever used. I haven't tried the Vallejo Mecca uh, line yet, though, not so much. So that uh, remains an unknown to me. All right, I'm going to keep going on with this mid-tone because this bit up here at the back has kind of escaped our blend a little bit. So we'll just drag that back down towards the mid-tone over a couple of glazes. I know we're kind of there. What colors do you use on black? I'll give you the same recipe we used for this guy, right? Screenshot this for me. So we start with... Fuck's sake. Start with Tire Black from Secret Weapon. Bogren Brown from P3, Administratum Grey from Citadel, and then we take a dark tone, which is basically a black wash, and glaze in the recesses. That's how you paint black, or at least that's how I paint black. Uh, and we'll probably be doing how to paint black actually on Thursday stream because I'm going to do the armor panels for my Night Halverin that I need to paint on Thursday stream. And that'll be black. We'll be painting black. It'll be painting yellow. It'll be painting hazard stripes. It'll be all manner of fun, cool, awesome shit that I love. So, that's a reasonably passable blend all the way through until we get to here, where it's just a little bit too abrupt for me coming into the shadows here. Uh, Viking... Peace out. Oh, before you go, dude, I posted all your stuff today. Call it a week to get to Denmark currently, I guess. I have no idea. So let's grab a tiny amount of that Dan Kangol screen. And bring this down to help feather out that joint. You've got the tiniest moth in the world in here. It's like five mil long. That's crazy. Say broken rank. No, I probably did, but I meant to say gravedigger denim. 
we went from doing the weekends worth of streams to going back to my day job, which, regardless of what some people may think, uh, you need to be quite intelligent to do. And yeah. it taxes you a lot. So uh, try um, scale 75 Viking gold, dwarf gold. I really don't like their elf gold because it's too thin. Um, and black gold. They're really good. They're really good. Cheers, Des. Keeping me honest. Right. There's still this one bit just here that is annoying me. And I'm going to take the tiniest amount of paint on our brush. And just glaze that bit a little more. Uh, December wind flow improver almost all the time if it is a polyurethane based product so like a thin uh, like a primer or a varnish then I use thinner it helps cut through the plastic right, let's go the other way so I'm bringing that bright green up just here it looks a little bit scratchy so fade that in a little bit No, no, it completely changes the tone. This is a really warm green. The blue wasn't particularly cold, but because we had a blue sword, because there's blue elements in the black of his armor and in the hourglass, it, it, it sort of moves together a little bit. Um, and so as a result, it, this changes the tone dramatically. I can do two brush blending, I don't like doing it. If you're doing two brush blending, you're doing this, right? So you've got one brush, this is my wet brush and only wet, and then I've got this brush, which is my paint brush, I need to wash that, get another paint, and then do this, and this, and this, and I've stabbed myself in the eye, and I need another hand, so I put it there, and I grab this brush, and then I forget that this one's actually here, and I do this, and that shit, where's my wet brush, and then you'll, you'll you know. It's so fucking stressful doing two brush blending quickly it, it, I hate that I can do it we've, we've done the practice and I decided it's not a technique I enjoy so knock it off glazing is actually quite relaxing it's just a case of like is it perfect yet no then keep going is it perfect now yeah then stop and there's this tiny dot right here that's still a little dark so that one to glaze back up a little bit Spoken like a man that knows what he's talking about. I've, I've been there, brother. We fought the wars in the trenches of the toothbrush blending. It's just, uh, I hate it. Airbrush, fucking airbrush. Every time. Toothbrush blending can suck a dick. Whereas glazes, super simple. And it's something that I tell a lot of you guys to do, basically. Glaze up some highlights, glaze in some shadows. Uh, and so this makes for a decent stream. Because it's the advice that I've been telling you for, in some cases, months. Um, and it really helps. And the one bit of two airbrush blend, I could do that, actually. Give me two compressors, because this one's only got one um, one line out. But I could two airbrush blend like a fucking champion, I bet you. Comments up, Bob. Enjoy painting your night, mate. Right. That is about right, apart from this join here now. is too much to that mid-tone green. So you grab a little of our Caliban green. 
And again, just draw, that's too much paint on the brush, you can see already. Just draw that down away from there to help blend those two lines together. Don't make me laugh while I'm doing highlights on checkers. Well, whose fault is that? I've been there. We, we've done all the checkers. We don't need to anymore. Soma Karma, thanks for that follow and welcome. Uh, one left, one, one right. No, no, both in the right hand. I'd use both thumbs. <laughs> yes, mate. I'd, I'd have to do this. Be like. That, that's how it would have to be. All right, are we pleased with this? Yeah. Considering we're back to paint, <laughs> I can't believe I'm fucking doing this. <sighs> Considering we're back to paint, that on it, I think it's been pretty okay. So we're on the subject of glazing, because the last hour is gonna be spent me painting that white symbol on that shoulder pad. Does anyone have any questions about glazing at this point in time? Now is the time to ask, please. Because past that, I'll just be go and watch the VOD. <sighs> Bodmin, 1973. Thank you for that follow. Are some colors easier to glaze with than other. Yeah, comes down to pigment strength. Um, and no, we used four paints for that. So let's go to this view. We used the majority here because that's the middle part on the shoulder pad, right? That's where the, the most uh, variation is going to come to. This one is just the top highlights. This one is obviously just the bottom shadows. And there's one other thing we've got to do before we move on, and that's just tidy all of this up with a quick shadow line and a quick edge highlight. But that's another thing. Uh, if my paint dries too, too quickly, do I add more water? It's probably drying so quickly because you're using too much water. But that's why we have this uh, bank in the middle of our washes that we can top up any of these. Notice how this one, there's this tiny, tiny amount of dryness right here but this one is dry and dry and mostly dry and it's because the water level in here is way in excess of the medium whereas this is just a little extra water so we use these to help top these up and also and I'm about to do this in a second we use these when we just need to put a thick line on this so let me show you that one and grab some of the wash like paint that we've got, that Caliban green, because this is very easy to control, and now we're just going to panel line this bit of gold armour, so we know we're going to paint some on the gold by doing this, but we've got to rescue that a bit anyway, and this is just to give a nice sort of final edge to our shoulder pad. Uh, so it's useful having all of these colours still lurking about that one we could finish about there where that starts to come into black anyway and stop going into the green just tidy that up a little bit more fill this in and then again just here wrong one that was the glaze uh, did a little bit. If it's a dried up glaze to the glaze if you add water to it, it no basically um, because you've already altered the property a bit too much just bring it just make a new one rather than trying to bring it back how do we blow your mind uh, was there anything in particular that was like berry boy like, everyone can do this this is not difficult and yes, I know it's easy to say that from the position that I'm sat in where I've been painting for literal decades, but all you've got to do is really, 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 really thin your paint. 
and put a tiny amount on. Tiny amount. And then just keep doing it. And it's the most forgiving thing, right? You saw how it was a mess here. So we glazed down into our shadow and up into our highlight again to get something that was relatively smooth. I'm actually just going to take a bit more of that mid-tone and bring it back in because that looks a little scratchy to me. So let's grab some more warpstone below. Let's thin this just a touch more this time now. Shadow lines are very easy. Yeah, oils are good. Um, I use oils a lot. Mostly as a way of shading rather than as a way of blending though. Uh, Marco loves using his oils for blends. Um, because you can wet blend with so much more spare time than uh, using acrylics to, to wet blend with. Do that quick dry. Okay, now earlier on, somebody, uh, scale 75, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant metallics. The gold here is um, scale 75. Uh, dwarven gold. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. We're just gonna bring the shadow back up over that ever so slightly to help take out that little watermark a little bit of a line and then I'm gonna do one highlight up here is wet blending better there is no better um, there's just different if, if you rank them in order of preference instead of order of um, like final result that's the only way you can go from like better to worse. I love airbrushing, so airbrushing is the best for me because I have the most fun. I hate two brush blending, so that's the worst for me because I have the least fun. But I will get a result that is similar across both. Now, I will not lie, my skill with an airbrush far outstrips my skill at glazing. Yes, I know this looks relatively okay. But I spend 10 hours a week airbrushing I spend maybe five minutes a week glazing. That's what, 600 times the amount of time? Uh, I'm just going to take a little mix of the Necroti Green Wash version and the Moot Green Wash version and build up a nice little bright highlight we can use that's not super in your face just to finally edge this off with a little edge highlight. Um, yeah, but look, I, I, I don't say to try and sound modest. Honestly, this this is not hard. It just takes time, it takes patience and practice. The technique is is the most easy thing. Like you put a tiny amount of paint on your brush and you move it around a little bit. Uh, I joke with Aid Cook. He spends hours and hours and hours pushing water around a miniature. That's basically what glazing is. No, there's no secret to it. There's, there's no like you need to sit under a waterfall, contemplating the meaning of life for ten years before touching a brush. Um, there's just wave around some slightly damp paint and hope it looks okay at the end of it. And if it doesn't, just keep doing it until it does. So, is that highlight pronounced enough? No, not really. Let's go a little bit higher. So even more necrotite. A little touch of water in that mix. Uh, in your opinion, what color do you think I should prime my Dark Angels? Some say black, some say dark grey. Okay, first question is how are you painting your Dark Angels? Because there are loads of different ways that you can do it. Do you want to do them Games Workshop's current style of like Tron Angels? Or are you looking to do uh, more traditional green? Uh, and how do you plan on doing your highlights? Do you plan on doing like gradient highlights like this? Or heavy metal star highlights? You hate Tron Angels. 
You're in the right place. I hate that shit. Look at the complete absence of edge highlights on quite a gigantic amount of this miniature. I, that's not my bag at all. Right, there we go. We've got a shadow. We've got a nice tiny, you can barely see it, but you can still see it. A little highlight just in there. Just to really finish that edge off nicely for us. Now we're going to ruin it all with some white ink and swear. Quite a lot, I guess. Uh, for that, as with any like large area freehand, I strongly suggest that you prepare yourself a nice large area on your wet palette. So I'm just going to replace this entirely and go in a little bit, but not with my headphone leaf. I bought some new shelves for this. So I've got these massive paint racks that are like 80 bottles. Uh, yeah, about 80 bottles of paint each one. And as you can see, they're full and in fact overflowing down into my current office where my laptop is. And um, I've now bought some, which will take a couple of weeks to get here, I guess, from Element Games, which are vertical. So they've got a couple of drawers at the bottom. They've got some stands for things like the contrast paint and a few other bits and hobby material. And then they just stack. And you can go as high as you want, but it's still stable because you just buy an extra set of like shelves and pop them on top. Uh, so hopefully I'm going to transfer all of the paint from here to that. What I'm going to do at the same time is carry out a little bit of a, a sort of MOT of my um, paint station because there's a load of shit here that I never use. I mean like never use. I, I will never use a bad and black because I don't like it. Uh, I will never use um, Moot Green from Games Workshop because Necrotai Green is better in every fucking way. Um, and there's a few other bits and pieces on there that I am never, ever, ever going to touch ever again. And so when I've done that, I'll throw them all into a box. we we'll just do like a random person on stream uh, can win that. You can have all the old paint that I, I don't want. Um, right. It's going to go so wrong. So here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to start off by painting our white symbol green I know I need to get that night poster in but fortunately they should only be about like this tall and we still got plenty of room for the, the poster to go in um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're not your level I paint them in the manner you do okay Nano do you have an airbrush because that will speed you up considerably And anyone from the weekend, you'll know the answer to this question. Why am I going to paint this white insignia in green? Uh, also, I would, highlight, I, would, I would prime in black, by the way, to answer your question, especially if you've got an airbrush, because you get your black primer down, and then you take some like Caliban green, and you shoot that from underneath. You take some warp stone mixed with Caliban, you shoot that down from on top. You've already got those transitions. And you can go back to Caliban and just feather in some more shadows if you need, or even mix up with black to get some really dark shadows, which I'd probably suggest. Um, and I think that's the, the, the best way to sort of go about doing that sort of thing. Uh, Wafflecraft, you are on point, man. That's two answers you've got, like, nailed down. Uh, yeah, so if you mess up, it's not the end of the world. It kind of isn't easy to fix, but it's easy to cover up mistakes if you lay it down in the green first, says Nitch. Do you prone an airbrush or spray can? Airbrush. Always. Always. Always airbrush. Milo, you negative son of a bitch. How dare you. Uh, so, first thing you need is some steady hands, and how you get those is up to you. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all fun and games. We do a similar stream to this, but with airbrushing. Every stream I do is pretty much with airbrushing because I love it. Um, 
And we do a lot of, of airbrush blends, so. Right. So let's start off with a nice thin, but not glazy thin, just thin version of this green. And then, actually, before we do that, let's let's start at the very, very beginning. No hazard lines. No. Not on this. No need to put hazard stripes anywhere on this guy. Let's just flick back over here. So we're going to paint that large green uh, shoulder pad in the top right. We're going to paint that uh, insignia. We're not doing marble, we're just going to be a nice flat, possibly with a slight gradient, depending on time. We're going to paint that. Um, I'll answer the rest of the chat questions once we've just talked through this, but the first thing you've got to do is you need to break down what you're doing. So on stream the other day, I was sort of sat here measuring stuff with like the, the end of a brush, you know, the whole like, oh, I'm an artist, and that's about that many brush bits high, and then that's that many brush bits wide, and and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll print you one, how you doing, Matt? So we need to look at this shoulder pad in a bit of detail so we can start working out our scale so when we take it from here and put it onto this chap, it looks about right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the length of the sword which goes from almost the bottom point on the shoulder pad uh, to almost the top point and that's where we're gonna hit our first problem. We've got this little lump in the way. Now when I did the Ultramarine stream, uh, sorry, Ultramarine uh, shoulder pad on stream, I decided the best thing to do is to ignore that thing's presence and paint down to there as if it wasn't part of it. So we ignored that and came down to here. And that's probably what we're gonna do with this sword. So the point will frozen. Oh yeah, here he is. How you doing, brother? The king of all crons, the silent prince, right here. Let's get some hype in the stream for Frozen. Roll one to explode, getting his sub on as well. How's it going? How's your stream, man? And Windy also getting the host in there. Love it. It's a cucumber freeing. Cucumber King. Uh, yeah, let's just, just no. A horrible story about that, I'll tell you guys after we finish this explanation. Did an hour Drukari Ru tonight and then some more in the Overlord. Awesome, we've spent an hour and a half glazing that shoulder pad green. To go from bright green through everything else into super dark. At the start of the stream, that was blue with an Ultramarine logo on it. Roll once explode, thank you for that host. What we're doing now is we're talking about the free hand we're about to put on here. So, so far we've done an hour and a half of glazing, theory, practice, what to do, and away you go. Now we're talking about putting this uh, chapter symbol onto the mini. So we've got to paint that sword. We'll start essentially from the beginning. We are working out the scales for that in terms of the sword is almost the length of the shoulder pad, which we just segued into that being our first problem because this shoulder pad isn't as long as it would normally be. We're missing about two to three mil off the bottom because of this little hemisphere. So we're going to ignore that this exists I'm going to paint the sword all the way down the middle and have it stop just above here. That's that's the way it is. And that's fine. Because the other option is we put the point here, reduce the length of everything by what? Maybe, uh, a t maybe 20%. Which means we're having to reduce the width of everything by 20%. And so instead of having a, a shoulder pad that contains an insignia that kind of fills the space, you've got this little participation award just slapped on his shoulder and nobody wants that. So let's go back over to our inspiration, our um, reference. We know that the length of the sword is the length of the shoulder pad. 
And if we do a bit of this, then that is also about the same as the width on the wings. So that means that we know that the saw's got to go from... Keep flicking back and forth. So it's got to go from about this point here, right the way down, but then the wings, which start at about here, have to go out almost to the edge of our shoulder pad. So all we're doing right now is roughly working out where the place of everything goes. Then we're just going to draw in some bare bones lines to work out if we've got it right. Uh, is it better if you make the freehand with a mid-tone color? Well, yeah and no. If we do that, then we've then got to paint even more coats of white paint over it. So it's better to go with a lighter color so you can glaze down into the mid-tone and you're okay. Also, this is the glaze that people will see most. That's why we spent so much time doing this part of it and less time doing this part of it because this one matters more. So I'd rather use the highlight color up and around these areas where we know we'll be okay if we get some out on here, it's, it's all right. So overall, this is the decision that we're going with. So now we're just gonna draw like a stick figure version of the Dark Angels logo uh, while I answer the questions that we had in the chat. So one of them was, uh, what's a good yellow spray can from Imperial Fist? Kind of annoying that Avalanche Sunset can was discontinued. I have absolutely no idea. You could try the Army Painter. Um, I love everything. This is well known. This is a fact. Uh, and I think the best way to paint Imperial Fists is to prime them black, then zenithly highlight with white, so that's you spraying from the top down the mini to give you some nice white uh, highlights. Then turn the miniature upside down and spray underneath with red and then spray over the top with yellow, with the airbrush. We did an Imperial Fist, which we did as a raffle giveaway uh, on the last weekend stream we did prior to this one. Um, because those are the colors I painted my Nurgle Demon army in. I used the Imperial Fist as a test project, uh, sorry, test uh, piece for that project. Right, so now we're looking at the placement of the crossbar of the wings, and they are about 40% down. So. Bear in mind this comes down to here in our head. That's halfway. So just above that is where our wings start. So we need to move out slightly and just do a dot either side. So we've got a start point for those. And the reason you do a tiny dot is because you just want to reference more than anything else. Yeah, there, there is. Uh, that's fine because we're going to cover up most of them. Uh, I also want to make sure that they are the same level, which they're not. It should be there. And that will go, like I said, almost to the edge. So that brings us to about here. And then also to about here. So we've got that crossbar essentially. Then we're going to draw that back in so we've got a good reference. And I will tell you a story about a cucumber, which is why I don't want to think of cucumbers and frozen. So I have had many jobs in my life. Uh, I get bored very easily, and as a result, I uh, frequently have done things that are unusual or just a little bit out of the ordinary. Uh, I've been a professional wrestler, I've been a cage fighter, um, I've worked in banking, uh, I've worked in a contact center. Uh, I currently work in app development and web development. I love it, it's great fun. Uh, but I once worked as a greengrocer when I stopped being a chef and the most horrifying thing happened to me as a greengrocer. Uh, I was working in a store not far from where I live right now, and a 
we'll, we'll say old but not elderly woman. Uh, let's place her somewhere in the region of late 50s. She came in and bought, after much deliberation, a large cucumber. And she kept picking up different cucumbers and looking at them and putting them down, different ones. Putting them down. And I thought she was just looking for... This. I need, a, I need a really nice shiny cucumber or whatever for my salad. I don't have no idea what was going through her head. Frankly, I didn't give a toss. And then I knew what was going through her head when she walked up to the till and she said, did you know that if you put a cucumber in the microwave for 15 seconds, it feels just like the real thing? And I stood there and I thought, I thought and then I realised what she meant. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you can understand why I, I don't want the merest thought of frozen the Cucumber Man. At all. <laughs> Fuck no! <laughs> now, I've got to admire the lady for wanting to share that, because that's, that's a hell of a share in a public place. But then you get to thinking, like, <laughs> how did she arrive at 15 seconds? It's like 30 seconds? Oh, no, it's it's mush. Uh, two seconds. Still a bit chilly. What, what level of product testing have, have those cucumbers been subjected to? For it to be 15 seconds exactly not 16 no not 12 15 <laughs> you can if it's at room temperature <laughs> We're not really looking to color this in fully because that's what the white is for, but we do want to get a good outline of, of everything because especially over the darker areas, and this is another reason why we're using the highlight color, the white will have better coverage over the green when we get around to like these bits. Rocky! The mummers, man, they're magic. So many questions we don't want to know. Yeah, fuck yeah. Anyway, why is Frozen the Cucumber Man? Unless he also knows it was 15 seconds. Which I strongly doubt. <laughs> Mate, a cucumber was like 25p. So, you know. I suppose it saves on... Uh, on maybe like baby wipes or something. So, <laughs> right, that actually doesn't come in contact with the sword blade, so we need to do this on a slight angle, and it comes down to the flare-out point ends, which we'll call just above that little bump in the shoulder. So that's the line we need to follow, not that little bit in the middle. Uh... Wow. Wow. I didn't expect that. I, I expected that to go even more dark than that, but that's good. Right, and there are four, one, two, three, four, yeah, four bits of feather, essentially, on each of these. So the first one's slightly thicker than the rest. So let's just draw that out to about here for now. And these do not go in straight lines top to bottom they go on an angle uh, studio natia thank you for that follow uh, how long in a regular oven then now we're asking the big questions yeah uh, nidge that's a question I never never wanted to know um, 
I mean, I didn't even want to know the first part, if I'm honest, but also we need to do a little... He's coming down like dots. So there. 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 I think that's about right. So we just roughly shade this in, then we're replicating the other side, and then we've just got the little hilt of the sword to do, uh, which is fucking tiny as well, so that, that'll be fun. Uh, part of the time about this channel with awesome painting, I walk into the story, hi, I'm staying. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, who's your partner? It, well, you don't have to answer that, I guess. Uh, but if they're a regular viewer, then tell them thank you very much from me. For, for bringing new people over to the stream. Even if it is just for the cucumber stories. And no one's told me yet why Frozen is the cucumber Frozen. Like what what is why is Frozen the king of cucumbers or something? Uh Pigs props. Ah, nice. We've got his and hers mohawk fans tonight. That's awesome. At least I, that's a gross assumption, so forgive me for being correct. Uh, right. Now let's do the other side. So we've got one wing. We've got one winged sword. What stories... You have more than one story. I, I've got a billion stories. Some of them are fucking horrible. Some of them I literally can't say on, on stream or I will possibly be arrested, let alone uh, taken off air. Um, I've got some awful ones from wrestling. Uh, so there were, there were a lot of people that I used to tour with and occasionally you'd have somebody uh, as part of the tour that was not particularly nice. Some people get into wrestling because they are bullies, essentially. And I've worked with a few of them and uh, I've had to wrestle with some of them. Let's just say there weren't so much stern words as a good kick to the chops. Um, hang on, have I gone wrong? Yes, just a bit. Uh, shrugging Atlas 84. Thanks for that sub, dude. Uh, chicken fingers. Peace out, mate. Do you have stories about flamers? Uh, no. No. I mean, a chef once set himself on fire using a, a little butane torch uh, for a creme brulee. But it was a very, very small fire and it was very, very, very quickly put out. So the story is about as interesting as the bit we've just covered. And I kind of gave you the punchline, so that's that's that. Uh, it was entirely the UK scene that I wrestled in. Um, before I had an injury, I was due to go out to the States and go to the funk place. I've forgotten the name of it. Um, in Memphis, where I was going to train under Dory Funk, uh, sort of his family, uh, and help train their guys in more English style of wrestling which uh, traditionally was lots of locks and holds and stuff and they would help train me in the more American style of wrestling but what they didn't know is that I was mostly uh, whilst I knew some of the English stuff and whilst I knew a fair amount of the American stuff what I really do was a lot of Lucha Libre wrestling so arm throws uh, hurricane runners jumping off ropes um, and because I have a strong martial arts background a lot of it was more sort of like your Steve Black when if anyone remembers him from the Attitude Era of the WWF uh, where it's lots of kicks I think uh, Tajiri but me um, Judy, Judy is finished mate except uh, it's now going off to Nick and Nick's a Dark Angels player oh holy hell Deck flow coming in hot with 50. 
Let's get some hype in the stream for deck flow. We're getting all the raids this evening. Damn! How are you guys doing? Deck flow, how is your stream, dude? Who we got? Logo Che. Lowen. O2. There's a theme here. Uh, Boons Note 91. Yeah, there we go. Lowen, thanks for that follow. We've got Jack 3K. Nick McDade is here. I'll punch you in the head. Everyone, this is Nick McDade, the uh, number one Dark Angels player in the world according to the ITC tournament rankings, and a great friend of mine. And because he's my friend, I've painted over the lovely Ultramarine Freehand that we had on here with a Dark Angels green uh, blend, which we've done by hand. Uh, and now we're painting some Freehand. Uh, Channel67, thanks for the follow. Jack, thank you for the follow. Creepy Kangaroo is here. Milo, thank you very much. How's it going, Deck Hulk? Ah, Deck Flow. How is your stream? It's an improvement. Uh, I like Ultramarines. That's it. Everyone unfollows, unsubs. Yeah. There's no more stream anymore. Just me sat here with Tumbleweed looking at Ultramarines. Oakley, Oakley. So we have made a bit of a mistake, but it should be easy enough to fix that one. Uh, 171 people tuned in to the finest chapter. Is there 171 people here right now? No way. No way. Damn. Nalindi is here as well. How are you doing? She's super cool. Give her some hype. Everyone go follow her. She was here at the weekend. She saw this being painted originally, and now we're painting over it. I think that was what Matt, so I did, I did a quick AMA on Instagram, and um, because I'd asked Matt the same question of what's the most embarrassing thing you're willing to admit on Instagram, uh, he asked me the same thing, and I replied with, I secretly like Ultramarines. <laughs> I, do, I think they look cool. <laughs> right, so we've got the hilt of his sword to do, which is a little dot, which is a slightly bigger dot than that, and then a little dot. Okay, so that's a mess. It's an unholy, unholy mess right now. But we're going to grab some white. And we love using stuff like this. This is a ink. It's an acrylic ink. So instead of it being an acrylic paint, which is this, it's different. Basically, the only real difference to it is, is how finely ground the pigment in this is. No, you're not, Des. I, I, I don't care. We, we have made our comments final, and that's that's that. It's not going back to an ultramarine. It's been a dank angle. <sighs> Fuck you, Des. Uh, your indomitus still hasn't turned up yet. I actually got so fed up waiting, I kitbashed my own blade guard and started working on a Primrose bike. Brilliant. <laughs> Where did you order it from, dude? The link, and we're going to put some fresh water on our palette. So we're working with white. We don't want any of that green to corrupt it. There's nothing wrong with ultramarines at all. You're all wrong. And I worked for Games Workshop, which means I've painted more ultramarines than most people. They're okay. Uh, Reasoning, yes, yes, I did. I actually watched Valorak's video on that um, because. The coolest thing in all of 40k is Angron. He is. He is the demon Primarch of rage. 
Ugh. If I could be anyone in 40k, I'd be Angron. For definite. Constantly having a scrap. Always pissed off. I mean, the similarities are endless. Right, so now we've got some white ink. So we're going to start fleshing this out a little bit with this. And it's going to take many, many coats of white to smooth this out. Because same as any paint, you know, you will get brush marks coming through and little imperfections and so on. And it's just going to take some time, but that's fine. We're working on our freehand. This was all one great big master plan to do two lots of, uh, of freehand. Uh, dude, we, we frequently do this. Uh, we're just bowing to the dark gods and that helps with the freehand. Uh, it was worse last week when the mohawk was about another inch and a half long. Um, and so even from this position, it was more like this position. So, you know, but thank you for the warning. We need an exclamation point mohawk command for when the moe is in the way of the camera. Is there no difference between Dalarani and Liquitex white ink? I have not used Liquitex white ink, but I've used a lot of other Liquitex inks and they feel about the same. I don't know if that's actually true or whether I just haven't noticed the difference, but it they both do pretty much the same job. They've both got the same uh, vibrancy. Uh, the same intensity and this is why inks are really good because that pigment is so finely ground you've got something that will give you really good coverage but stay thin so uh, Angron he might have been in Battle for the Abyss but learned the Horus books uh, he was in one of my absolute favourite books which is Betrayer by Aaron Dembski Bounden and I fucking love love that book just oh yes amp services dude how you doing let's get some love in the stream for my boy justin this guy is an absolute boss super positive member of the hobby and i have been so rude as to ignore his twitch whisper despite having read it and thought yes that would be a fucking great idea just haven't replied yet which I'm really sorry about the weekend was a bit of a weekend we painted this guy in full as an ultramarine judicia and we painted the Necron Scorpec Lord in full looking like the unholy love child of Freddy Krueger the ABC robot from Judge Dredd and one of the greatest movie mechs of all time Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. Mmm! Mmm! It was so good! Yes, Betrayer is the book where he fucking squats a Warhound Titan because he's so fucked off. Like, with the sheer power of being completely raging, he squats a Titan. So, so epic. Watching a painter hype while painting. Fuck yes, man. Angron's the boy. I don't, I don't care what project I'm working on. When he finally gets released in miniature form uh, for 40k, I am dropping everything that I'm doing apologizing to my client for the delay and I'm finally going to paint the um, Corn Demonkin army I've wanted to since the book unfortunately didn't appear in 8th no Corn Demonkin that's the only codex from 7th that was a full codex that's just like and uh, no no demonkin for you. Give me all the bloodthirsters in the world and some actual proper 
real Berserker sculpts. And then it's Demon Kin time. So we're starting to get a ever so slightly fat winged Dark Angel symbol. And now it's just a case of keep doing the white until that's all nice and solid. Then we'll get some of the greens back out and we'll carefully edge in around the sides. And what that's going to do is give us. What do they turn around for? I don't know. I actually don't know. We just carry on painting. Damn. I'm actually now getting old, clearly. Uh, but what that's going to give us is a really nice crisp edge to all of this. I think I turned around to grab something to show you and then realized that the thing I was going to show you was in fact this miniature that used to have an ultramarine symbol on like this. Uh, Die Hard love this. 822, thank you for the follow. That is the best film for Christmas. That's the only Christmas tradition I have is watching that on Christmas Eve with a stogie and some whiskey. Uh, and Steiner Miniatures, thank you for the follow as well. Shade of Green looks like Salamanders. That does not look like Salamanders. That's Dark Angels Green. If you're not happy with the green, I don't care, Nicolaris. You're really not happy with the green. You've got a demon behind you. Yes. Honestly, do you not... Is it too, too bright? Uh, Dr. Gang 68 thank you for that follow dude welcome you're just playing up last chance is the green too bright yes or no honest answer Roll one to explode, you and I would clearly get along very well. Might be the light contrast settings. Uh, not really, this is pretty much exactly what it is on the screen. Uh, I have spent a very long time pissing about with the settings to try and get that as close to real life as possible. Because uh, I hate that. I, I, I've seen a lot of stuff that's like Instagram photos and so on that are not the same as the Mini. Um, my buddy Jake, who is, or at least was a streamer, I, I think that's probably now passed him by um, but I'm still subscribed to his channel uh, he, was the, he used to be a tattoo artist and he told me stories about the number of times he'd be at like conventions and he'd see tattoo artists that he looked up to uh, that would take a photo of their work and then they spend 20 minutes pissing about with photoshop and an ipad or whatever before they show the picture to anyone so um, yeah I, I can't stand that. Inks, how you doing? So we're just going to paint this white repeatedly until it's a nice, strong, solid white. That That's it. We're just colouring within the lines. There's no secret to this. It's just repetition. Much like the glazing that we did earlier on, it's just reps nothing else that's another really good reason to be using the ink because it's already about the same consistency that you want it to be um, and at that point it's just go with it do the grind reach level 100 ascend to create a demon hood 
Come on, Grom, and win. Sorted. Inside the lines, double underline. Did you underline inside the lines? Alright, and then when we finish this, uh, I'm going to burn it. Burn it. That's just melodramatic. So when we finish this, we're going to grab some green. Hey! Tony Spruce, you legend. Uh, left wing more than the right one. Look, your political views are your own. None of that here. Is it INX? Yes. There you go, Jade. Have some beeps. Connor. Thank you for the follow. Your left or his left? But I know what you mean. One of them's kind of fuzzed out a little bit. The other one isn't. This one's a little bit sharper, and we're going to fix that when we do the green later on. Remember earlier on when I said, have I fucked up? I think I have. That was where I'd realised I'd fucked up. Um, also, that top line isn't quite the same. So a lot of this is not only about getting that smooth cut of white paint down, which is the vast majority of this step. Uh, but it's about just refining the edges and that comes both at this step where you need to thicken something up and at the next step where you need to thin something down so always be kind of appraising the work that you're doing with an honest eye um, you like it because the wing is more straight Uh, on the picture, they actually slope downwards slightly, but I think I prefer the ever so slightly more uh, animated upward tick, which is what we've got on this one. So now I'm just trying to bring that one kind of into line. I am going to take off some of the very top of there, where it slightly balloons out. bring that back into a, a bit more of a um, tight pattern. The bit I'm most unhappy about is the bottom of the wing just here. But we keep going with the white. Uh, that's a brown cloak instead of a traditional cream colour cloak. I won't say what's wrong with the symbol though, it's a nice. That's the most backhanded compliment you could have given me. You just told me you think there's something wrong with it, but you're not telling me what it is. That's super terrible. prolong the lifespan of the point on my paintbrushes take good care of them that's there's, there's no real um, yo dog there's no ancient Chinese technique here there's some um, basically just make sure you keep these yeah your little condoms for your paint because um, that helps protect the bristles store them let down not standing up definitely not that way unless you can suspend them in a rack uh, use things like brush soap uh, slash conditioner I use the masters but only because I haven't yet picked up any of Jen's uh, drunk tastic brush goop uh, which is allegedly even better from things that I've heard um, 
don't jab the miniature with them. Make sure you use a good pointed brush, but only for um, like the things that require a nice stable point and use something that's a little bit more of an older brush or that's got a, a point you don't care about so much at least for everything else. Um, then the next real secret is that frequently you get what you pay for. Uh, I buy brushes which are relatively expensive. I say relatively, they're about 10 to 12 pounds of brush which seems like a lot but I paint about 50 hours a week and about 40 hours of that week is with pretty much this particular brush, like this exact one. Um, and they last me anywhere up to six months before the point still remains a perfect point. I just lose a couple of mil off the front. So uh, I have no idea. We just chose a winged sword I like the look of and that's it for that no rhyme no reason just yep this one looks tight that's what we're going with right we're nearly at the point where everything is colored in white which is good because I imagine most of you are bored of seeing you literally paint the same thing a hundred times um, And then we can start getting the green back out and just tidying up the edges, making sure this is nice and uniform. Uh, which is also good because we've got about five minutes left before we would normally go over to the whip gallery. Uh, so the whip gallery will keep relatively short today. We'll give some feedback, uh, but we'll keep it kind of short and concise. Normally we like to try and be a little bit longer with it and give something really, really constructive, but uh, I am a tire J, unfortunately, so it will probably be a little bit uh, more rapid fire than normal. The Dyson, how you doing, man? Uh, fair. Um, what was I about to say? So, yes, if you would like to have your work put in the work in progress gallery and have it shown on stream and have a chat about it and so on and so forth, exclamation point Discord. Get a link to the Discord chat where you can obviously just hang out with us and enjoy talking about 40k, whether it's competitive or a nice chilled out game, whatever we cater to pretty much everybody in there. Um, you can also get some decent advice on your painting from me at most times of the day, but obviously sometime I'm not going to be able to instantly respond, so just bear in mind. Uh, 2318, where I am right now. Right, greens. So let's go back to our range of green paints. We've got Caliban Green, Warpstone Glow, and Necrotite Green. Uh, everything's good, dude. Yeah, we're just repainting a shoulder pad on a Marine that we spent maybe half an hour freehanding at the weekend. Nick, I want beer. I want beer from you. Actually, I don't want anything. You're a mate. This is why we do shit like this. It's good to have mates. And if your mates are good enough with their basically family, then it's good to be able to do things for your family. Peace out. Right. So we've got uh, Caliban Green on the brush. And what we're going to do is some ideally super straight lines to bring our little... Uh, Dank Angles symbol into a nice tidy, just making sure the Moby's not in the way. Very defined wing. Now, much like the glazing, when, not if, when you make a mistake, 
Uh, oh, it's uh, exclamation point win and exclamation point mystery, mate. Um, how would you suggest a person like me has major hand to eye difficulties to freehand? Uh, that's a rough one. Um, do you mean you just have difficulty with detail work? Or is it like your hands uh, tremble? Or, I mean, obviously I don't want to be personal, but the more information you give me there, I might be able to give you a better answer than the, the sort of stock one, which unfortunately is just practice. You have to kind of feel where your brush tip is, rather than necessarily see where it is. Um, or maybe you get something like Ada's got, it's got that kind of like flip down visor that goes in front of his glasses so he can see uh, like a magnified view. Um, so essentially the question I suppose is, is it the eyesight that's the issue or the hand that's the issue? Uh, if it's the eyesight that's the issue, then um, I mean, obviously I recommend everyone have regular like sight checks and so on. I wear contact lenses. So I go every couple of years and have my site measured up and uh, a new prescription filled if needed and so on. Uh, if it's the hand, then a comfortable painting position is the most important thing. Because if you're comfortable, then you're able to paint for longer and so on. You can concentrate a little better. Uh, last stream is Thursday, yeah. Dysfraxia, I know. Dysfraxia, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say maybe it's not for you because that's the fetus answer and that shouldn't be the way we go. Um, we should always strive to better ourselves and to do things that everyone says, even ourselves, that you, know, you can't do that. I mean, there are limits, but Let's try and overcome them as much as possible. Uh, so, can you do anything like this for an intermediate amount of time? So, not a like maybe not sit there for two hours doing freehand, but if you can do like five minutes uh, before it becomes an issue, just maybe do it in stages. Uh, if there's a better painting position or like setup that you could have to help you out, um, maybe you could look at your environment a little bit. Excuse me. Are you currently taking commissions? No, I'm afraid not, mate. We are so booked, it's not even funny. I've even taken a booking that I said to everyone I wouldn't take a booking past this point because the person that was asking me to do it is someone that I really like uh, and they're also a YouTube uh, content creator um, and I've even had to tell them look you know we'll do it that's cool but I've got people I've agreed to do work for and so before you even get started you might be looking at March it's I told him that about four weeks ago so that's nine months down the line before we start the commission so I, I can't take anything more on that I, I would love to I genuinely genuinely would because I, I, I really like what I do uh, I've got to look after everyone else that we've already agreed to thank you man that's that's super super cool of you to say uh, right so we now moved on to our mid-tone green which is the warpstone glow to get some of these Lines that down here we could use the Caliban green, no issues because everything was dark, but up here it's not. Now it's okay to have a darker line around our icon because it helps snap it into focus, but let's just make sure it's not the thing that gives, like takes away uh, all of the focus to it. That's why we've got all of the rest of these lined up on the palette. So for these highlights we can get away with it. Uh, not highlights, uh, correction lines rather. Well we got Miggy Mimosa. Thank you for that follow. Also, 
Oh, nice. Uh, hey, no worries. Uh, Any time. I hope I don't even know if what I said helped. So, uh, fingers crossed it did. Like that's all from a position of me knowing absolutely nothing uh, about um, like that kind of condition. I, I know of it. Uh, and the only person I knew that had a similar thing that was a hobbyist basically just dry brushed everything. That, that was it because uh, he knew that he could do that and that was fine um, and this is when I was working at GW and we, we tried to help him out with other um, like other uh, techniques that he could do uh, and eventually we got into things like using washes properly and correct uh, sort of theory for highlighting um, but in terms of his physical ability dry brushing was still kind of the limit uh, okay, that's not massively even. We're too long on this side. We start bringing that back a little. Brush liquor and paint eater, I'm afraid it sometimes, man. All right, now I'm gonna get a mix of these. Uh, Murky Merka 33, thanks for that follow. Uh, just going to mix in a little necrotite with our warp stone. Give ourselves a bit of a mid colour between those two. Kingfish Games. Dark Prussian Brew from Vallejo. Tastes like banana. What's a Laffy Taffy? Is that those like foam banana things? The, uh, the bright yellow, extremely um, synthetic bananas. And Shribla. Cheers for that follow too. Lots of new people tonight, this is awesome. Cheers guys. And it's Cedorak as well. It is a candy. Dang. Right. I'm gonna shorten that one. That looks about right. I also wanna thin it slightly from the bottom. So we're doing now, we're back to glazing essentially. And we are just glazing in over the white till we get something that's about right. As long as it's close, we're okay. And that's kind of close. We just need to reinforce that glaze and then just keep reinforcing that so that the uh, image stays with what we've got. And then we've changed our Ultra Smurf to the Dork Angle and Nicolaris is happy. Uh, Phenomenal is pushing it. We've done a white shape. Uh, but I'll, I'll take the compliment though, mate. Thank you. So again, let's just blur these out. And as long as we keep this outline going for this shape, doesn't matter too much about it interfering with our glaze up here because it all looks really intentional. Uh, I am just going to fix ever so slightly this where well, that went a little out of hand. There we go. That'll do. I am he who serves justice with my sword. Uh, I've lost the point. Has anyone seen the point of my sword? One dank angle. Ta-da. Now I just need to put his backpack on, which we snapped off unceremoniously earlier on so we get to the fecking shoulder pad for the second time. Laffy Taffy are the little wrapped up chewy candies. Oh, I don't think we have them here, but I know the kind of thing you mean. That's the wrong super glue. This is the right super glue. Got rid of glue. So, while I'm doing this, we'll zoom out quick. For all of you guys that are new to the stream, 
every month we do at least two giveaways. Although this month, I think we are 9, 10, 11, 12. I think we've done 12 this month. We did nine for the Indomitus cameras this way. Nine for the Indomitus thing, because it was ninth edition, so nine giveaways, nine different things. We did the... Did you do the glow in the dark stuff this month or was that last month? Glow in the dark, was that before Rag... No, glow in the dark, that was after Ragnar, that's 10. And then these two, so that's 12. 12 giveaways this month. The two that we normally do, which we usually stick to, which we sometimes stick to, which we semi-occasionally stick to, Oh shit, the box on Instagram, 13. 13 giveaways this month. There, there's been a couple. It's been hard to keep track, so thank you for keeping me honest. Uh, the two we normally do, or we always do, and sometimes actually only do, are actually taking place on Thursday night. Every month, you guys in the stream that are watching earn Meeps, which is our channel currency. It's named after my cat, she is my baby. Uh, and those meeps are used to buy raffle tickets to try and win a £50 hobby voucher. Now that hobby voucher can be to any hobby stockist of your choice. We've done Games Workshop, we've done Forge World, we've done... Some... Oh, Firestorm Games, uh, Element Games. Uh, and once somebody was desperate to buy an airbrush, so I just gave him 50 quid because the hobby voucher is 50 pounds sterling value last month it got turned into nagash almost instantly upon uh, being sent out so that's a really really good prize if you need to buy a load of things brushes paints toy soldiers uh god you can spunk it all on like black spray paint to undercoat everything if you wanted to it's all good so if you would like to win that £50 hobby voucher, all you need to do is save your meeps. If you're a subscriber, we give you 3,000 meeps, which is enough for just over seven entries. It just generally means that if you watch every stream that we put out for a month, you get about 10, 10 chances to win that voucher. Your name's in the hat 10 times, basically. That takes place at about, 11, well, almost exactly 11.30 on Thursday's stream. That's Pia. We also have a giveaway every month for a prize from me. So every month I will paint a miniature for one subscriber and it is a subscriber only raffle. If anyone ever whinges about that, that's fine. They can do one, but I've got to take time out of my schedule for commissions to do this. And I think it's a cool way to support the stream, but it's kind of got to be a, a two way thing, at least until this can become more of a, if, if it can support itself basically. This month, we've got the choice of three miniatures, two of which you guys will know. One is this. This is the Blood Bowl Minotaur, and I frankly think this is one of the best minis that Forge Rod produced for the Blood Bowl game. I love him. He's got a great sculpt, there's so much dynamism, there's a brilliant set of facial features for him, the skin tones, and the opportunity to create some beautiful bits of art on this is amazing. Kingfish Games, we do still need a Croc Cigar, you're absolutely right. Uh, and the mystery is, is not one with Meeps. For that one, you just have to be here online on Thursday and be a subscriber. That's all. So Blood Bowl Minotaur, that's the first one. If you play Blood Bowl, you want it. If you play Sigma, you probably want it. If you play D&D, he'd be fucking great in a D&D campaign. Either as a player character or a bad dude. He'd be sick. <laughs> The second one that we've got is this Chaos Obliterator. Now, this might seem like a little bit of a step down in price from, say, Ragnar Blackmane that we had last month, but you can't buy this guy for less than 65 quid from Games Workshop because to get this, you have to buy the Start Collecting Chaos Space Marines thing, which is half a Shadow Spear, and that's 65 quid for two Obliterators when you really only want one. So he's one expensive mini. But we'll paint this up in the colour scheme of any legion of your choice. If you win, you get to choose the colour scheme. So that's the first two. Now, if either one of those makes you think, yeah, I, 
I'm not that fast. I don't, I don't really care. I don't play Blood Bowl, I don't play Sigma, I don't play Chaos. I don't play D&D. Well, we've got something else for you. It's a gamble. This is the mystery box. And in this box is a miniature. And I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Nobody knows what this is other than me. My housemate doesn't know. I've just told him that he would like it. He was very unimpressed when he said, oh, what's in it? I said, it's a mystery. The, the look I got was, was not a good one. Uh, he may have plotted to kill me in my sleep at that stage. But in this box is something that has spent time on the shelves. You can see we've got uh, Eldar minis, all the Indomitus stuff, obviously. We've had that for a little while. Um, some limited edition Space Marines, some Grey Knights. We've got some Warcry stuff, which is super cool. Uh, some other limited edition minis. We've got some Tau. We've got some Dark Eldar. We've got uh, Blood Bowl, Sigma, everything that you could possibly think of. In there, one of those things is in this box. Now, it's a mystery. It could be any of those cool things, but equally, it could also be just tucked away up there. I've got some 40k scenery, you know, the plastic Cities of Death stuff they made recently. It could just be a bit of scenery. It could be a Necron Scarab, but I mean like the shitty old ones, not the cool new ones. And I mean one of them, not four of them. It could just be a scenic base. You don't know. All you know is that it's a mini of some description that has to fit solely within the confines of this box. So, who knows? Who knows? If you want to find out, be here on Thursday and be a subscriber. You could not only win a £50 hobby voucher, but you could also win one of those minis painted by me in a colour scheme of your choice and shipped to you anywhere in the world. But for now, let's whip it out. Exclamation point Discord in the chat. Go to the Work in Progress channel. Show me what you've got. Kingfish Games, any idea how you can get hold of some Salamanders upgrades and transfers from EG has them, but they aren't shipping it stateside? Uh, who? Were they not a full? Oh, no, they weren't. They were a plastic blister pack. GW, if you live in the States, aren't they just straight from G-dubs? I don't know. Don't trust him. Let's get rid of his old pocket pussy. That's horrible. Cucumbers. <laughs> Robosh, how you doing? <laughs> he has them sold out for stateside. What, is it like currently or indefinitely? Oh, so this one is Hiko. He's back in business. Hiko has just finished renovating his house. He is an awesome painter. He's painted like 10 minis, and all of them are better than most of the ones that I have painted in the last, well... It, certainly in the length of time he's been in the hobby, they're all better than every mini that I ever painted during that time. And I painted a lot more than 10. They were just bad. So, Des says they come with a Primaris upgrade kit, if that's any help. So, Hiko, I can't wait to see what you do that Dreadnought, mate. You've done loads of mini Marines. Let's get the full Monty, absolute rocking Dreadnought going on. Farsiar says, coming up with a scheme for my brother's Blood Bowl team while waiting for my half of Indomitus to come. So we've got... Oh, the undead dudes. I've got this Blood Bowl team and I love them. They're right up on top of my shelves up there in a little case. I did mine purple because of no reason whatsoever. I just... Uh, I painted the team as a speed paint challenge and I got it done in about eight hours, which I was really happy with. Lots of oil up work. Uh, lots of airbrushing basically. These are cool. I like it, man. Is that little yellow at the top of those? It is, isn't it? Yeah, I like that, mate. Very cool. Very cool. Right. Hinky King. Hink ah, Hanky King. We'll get there eventually. Hanky King is painting 
a Primaris Man without a hand. This is the Banner Dude from the 8th Ed starter set, isn't it? Nice, man. Keep that banner off till he's uh, ready to be ready to be assembled, though, because much easier to paint when it's in your hand and not attached to this dude. For real. Uh, this is my blender attempt. It's worse than my aggressor. I think it is terrible. Okay. Uh, okay. So the only thing that you've got wrong here is your paint is way too thick. Um, you know how on mine at the start we could see there were brush strokes, but there were brush strokes that you could see because um, the hue was different, not because the texture was different, right? It looked scratchy and it looked untidy because of the, the lines of different color, not because of the lines of paint. I can see visible um, brush strokes in this, and I appreciate we've blown this mini up to a, a massive, massive size right now. But I think you need to thin your paint a lot more than you're currently doing. Uh, other than that, it looks like the technique you've used is is pretty okay. You know, it's just the paint needs to come down much, much, much thinner than you've currently got it. You can always, always do more coats of paint to build up the hue or the value of whatever it is that you're painting. Uh, roll one, piece, but you can't really undo that if you put too much paint on so thin it right down go again not a bad attempt though i even like the fact you've got some uh, brown paint around his boot makes him look like he's been walking on that uh, surface you've got it's all good butt shot power sword's fine you know it could do with some refinement the the blend goes from being that kind of mid blue straight into that light blue so take a mix of those two glaze that down into the sword yeah so what you really need to be doing is put your brush halfway down the sword and going the other way so lowest amount of impact you want on the mini to the highest amount of impact you want on the mini same as we we're doing earlier on and you'll glaze those two colors together in a way that will be a lot smoother there's a load of ultramarines in the uh, in this little uh, gallery that we've got going on. Um, there's one of them right there, in fact. Uh, all of the power swords in there have been done by hand, and each sword takes about an hour and a half to do. Uh, and that's for someone like myself that spends a fair bit of time painting. You see a couple just there. Uh, and that understands the glazing and so on and so forth. For someone that's still learning, you expect it to take at least that long, if not longer, to get those smooth blends down okay don't be disheartened by that it's a beautiful thing to learn but your salamander is looking sick that's all right man like i said at least that long if not longer it's a skill that just requires refinement and it mostly comes down to making sure your paint is thin enough also grab yourself a hairdryer uh, and if you don't have one go and build yourself a wet palette if you search youtube for tabletop minions, Uncle Adam represent wet palette. He'll show you how to build one. It's great. The seminal video on how to do that. Uh, Commissar Alfarius, he's getting some crons on the go. I bought some of these earlier on today because I needed to get free shipping on my element order. That's the only reason I have for that. So, <laughs> uh, oh damn, yes, give me some Victoria's Punch. Nice, dude. Getting that glowing effect, sort of trying to get down at least. Do a little bit of green in on the guns. Uh, you say finished, but I only see one dude with a finished base. Don't slack on those bases, man. Get them done. They add a lot to the mini. They add loads to the mini. Uh, Danny, I'll print you one. Right, what you got? This looks like some Sigma dudes. It is some Sigma dudes. Nice, nice little uh, priming station you got. Uh, Henneg88, thank you for that follow and welcome. We've got some, I'm actually not sure what these are. They look a bit like, I was gonna say infinity minis, but then the guy on the far right looks like Master Chief. 
is this Is this Infinity? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Infinity. It is Halo! Fuck! Damn, I should have stuck on my guns. That. Yes! Awesome! Great stuff, dude. And then here we got some Bone Dudes. Osriarch Bone Reapers, maybe? Um, looking good. Like the colour scheme. The banner could do with some work. Everything else you've got there. Nice highlights. Everything looks cool. The banner looks flowers of pancake. Um, you need to get some shadow around the gold glyph icon that you've got on there. You could do a work of some shadows into the creases and bring the highlights up more to match everything else that you've got there. And the next thing you need to do, and there is absolutely no debate over this. Oh my God, I saw the mask with a K debate thing from the US everyone keeps saying like so we've got this mask debate and I saw a clip of like a billion different newsreels all put together into one thing mask debate mask debate mask debate constantly it was hilarious but you must do the base rims no debate whether it's about masks or anything else black base rim every single one that video is hilarious uh, civilian waffles also got some crons on the go. That is sexy. That's good. So power blade, I like that. But the thing that I really like, you've done that little glow around the inside of that. There you are, black. They should be. <laughs> I know why you caps that. Triggered. It's no debate. It's just some idiots who want this in science. Uh, <laughs> that's that's human history. Um, moving on <laughs> quickly from that. That's sick, mate. I love it. Orange, black, steel. It's awesome. You could do with showing that metal a little bit more love, though. Uh, being really critical here because I love the rest of it, and that's why. So you need to just get in a little bit more shade. So look at his cloak. Each one of those little scales that make up the, the bottom of the cloak are very flat and you could do with just bringing a little bit more shade into each one of those. So put a little bit of wash on there and then draw it into the middle of each of those sort of scallop shapes that you've got. And that'll help just give each one its own little bit of personality. And if you take that theory, cheesy! Cheers for the follow. Uh, but then apply it to some of the other areas in his armor. So where his hand is holding the little res orb, yeah? on the underside of his forearm, you have more shadow here. So you can glaze some like darker colors up to lighter colors each way. So remember, your brush would start here, lowest impact with the model, and work down to the highest impact on the model for all of those shadows. And that will really just like pick that up. Uh, Milo Splat. There's a load of people making Necron armies with bone colors right now. Normally using the uh, Midwinter Minis slash Mikey from Hellstorm uh, color scheme. It's super simple. Uh, Mikey stole it from Midwinter. I showed him how to just sort of refine it a little bit. Um, and if you watch his video, then you'll see a load of my tips. Uh, and there you go. Chucking shade about, gotta get the shade in, mate. All about contrast. Uh, Nano, what do people think of my conversion? I think that looks pretty cool, actually. I think there's something weird with his arm. Oh, it's the side of a skull. Right, I'm with it. So, the thing I think most about this, and you're gonna hate me for it, and everyone else is gonna go, I know what Jay is about to say, is there is a Honking great big mold line down that arm. So please remove that before you go any further with the painting. Uh, as you could paint this in the most beautiful way possible, and that would still jump out to you. So please remove that. Either get some or like an exacto is always good. 
uh, but I use these. These are little sanding twigs, so like little uh, bits of like uh, foam core, basically, with just different grain, a different grit, sorry, of sanding um, material. I know, dude. I know. It's okay, mate. You know me, I like to have a laugh and a joke. Sometimes at your expense now, obviously, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, just one of these and just carefully just take those mold lines out. Conversion looks dope though, big fan. Big fan. Yeah, love it, mate. This jetpack's brilliant as well. I've done it a couple of times for commissions. The dynamicism in it is amazing. Uh, Kingfish Games. Base coat, blocking colors done for a source of Blood Bowl. Uh, is this the picture? Cool. Um, I've always found better results when I put the paint on the mini. Uh, this brings an entirely new uh, version to uh, finger painting, of course. Um, I've run out of jokes now, so we'll move on. But enjoy your uh, your blood bowl. Uh, okay, uh, in future, could you just put the Instagram pictures in here rather than that? Because always a little bit of a risky click, but I'll trust you. So let's do that and that for a start. Go away, you. Okay, cool. Do you, do you have a palette, or is it just like what, whatever room I've got left on this hand, we'll we'll use to mix some paint up on here, and then oh, I need some blue. I've got room on my thumbnail for that. And it's what is going on, dude? <laughs> I like the color scheme though. Yeah, greenish blue. Digging it, some red pants, red gloves. Yeah, man. I can get behind that color scheme. Nice work. Uh, Tony Sprue says, building this H. What the hell? Building this HG Quebly tonight before I tackle the beast. Is this a this is a Gundam thing, right? Does anyone understand what a HB Queb Quebly Quebly is? Is it this robot? I love that kind of beetle carapace thing he's got going on his shoulder. That's awesome. And he's got parachute pants. Uh, use it for initial tests for new pots I haven't used before. He's got a bunch of scanners. Oh, I see, I see. I'll print you one. Calm down. Calm down. So high grade Quebly, cool. High grade is one to 144 scale. Got you. Oh, that's what that means. That's the sun, right? So like perfect whatever is like a taller version. I keep hearing the the different um, perfect grade, some of the other grade. There's a few I, I hear them every now and again. Now I understand. Cool. I love the fact that this is basically vanilla ice. That's 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 sick. And what's this guy? This is a big old one to thirty-five scale tiger tank. Fucking hell, mate! Are you going to be able to sit on it and ride around? Because at that size, almost, I think, is the answer to that question. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Now I actually understand that I thought it was like, this is perfect grade because it came out of the factory in a really nice way and there were very few mold lines. I know that's the dumbest thing I could have possibly thought of, but in my head I was like, well, maybe it's like the other grades are like, not off cuts. Uh, Like, you know when you get like a broken biscuit box because it's full of ones that didn't quite make it through quality control? I thought it was like maybe that. But now I understand, so thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, it's a lot of parts. 300, oh, 
Damn, man. That's too many sprues right there. Username finally checks out. I can see some arm strain going on lifting that too, mate. That's that's a big old kit. Have fun with that. Damn. Uh, a base compromise. What is this? What What is this unbelievably bright green? Is he trying to run away from the ground? Is that why the panic look is on his face? That is green. When you say compromise, what was the... Is it because you've got a black rim, but you've got green flock with a little bit of yellow dryer brush? You're, you're mixing the two styles? Is, is that what's going on? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. You need some, uh, some rival craft static grass in your life. That's what you need. Inks, yeah, it is. The grass isn't always greener. Sometimes it's it's too green. <laughs> nice, mate. Uh, quid. My first cron. Hoping to smash the whole Necron side within a week. That's a goal. Okay, this is sweet. So you've gone for the, the Crackle Paint basing. Uh, which actually works on this guy. It's rare that it does, I think, but... Is solid. Then you've got. Did you do some of this with a sponge? I'm trying to work out if that's some texture that's been put down on the mini, or whether you sponged something else on top. You got bright red tufts coming too. Nice man. It's gonna sound really, really dumb. All right, it, it will. I do this a lot. One of my favorite parts of this is the fact you've decided that regardless of how this is your entire color scheme, you've got a little green, um, little green wire. And for some reason, I love that. I love the fact you just went, right, this needs to be something different to show it's like internal workings rather than outside murder chicken. I really like that. Good job, dude. I love the variation you've got in the colors. Very happy with this. I'd, I'd love to see this full arm on the table. Dramatic Undead. Oh, Greg's here today. I didn't see you there, mate. You've got the tiniest photo. Here he is. So this looks strangely familiar. Um, the next step, Greg, is to paint his shoulder pad green because your friend is your friend, basically. That's that's it. So paint the, over the blue with green and then you're there. No, 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 he says. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I wish, mate. I wish. Nice job, though, mate. Still a whip, obviously. Still see plenty of things that you've got to work on. You know what they are. I know what they are. Let's not belabor it. Love the color scheme you've got down so far, though. The, so I, I nearly did what you did on yours, on mine. Uh, look at his knee pad on yours. And then look at his knee pad on mine. Okay. I nearly painted the top of this gold as well. But I realized that if I did, it would start to blend in with his coat. And if we go back to yours, you can see that's exactly what's happened there. I figured I'd need that separation, that harsh line in there. Um, and because the brown that you've used is closer to that sort of mid-tone, and you can even use that brown quite considerably in uh, a lot of nomotype metal, it blends into the gold a little too much. Chapter Master Lucifer. Thank you for the follow. Now, Lindy! Peace out, hun. See you soon. Everyone give her a follow. She's awesome. And Botsan. Thank you for the follow, too. Otherwise, Greg, keep doing what you're doing, mate. Good job so far. Uh, pixel props. Oi, boss. 
find a new battle wagon you was after, you just need some paints. Okay. I can dig this. We've got the Land Raider Battle Fortress, clearly, right now. I really like the fact it's got a little deck outside that door. So, on a nice sunny day, you can just chill out on there, cruise around, play with the speed freaks a little bit. I like this. Little patio section on the top. This is good. That's a cool conversion. Now get some paint on it. Uh, Type Walker says, I love it. Under that track needs something though to hide the hollow bit, I think. I don't know. As long as there's a, um, like a gear or something in there, that's fine because the, the bit that comes down is on a hard enough slope and it's perfectly straight so it looks like it's taut. So as long as there's something in there, I think you're good. In the mini freezer and a chair, a lazy boy would go really, really well with that top deck. Yeah. Yeah, and a Bud Light fridge. I'd never drink Bud Light. Uh, can I actually make these bigger? Give me one sec. I've seen this mini before. Yes, I can because you're a boss and you've given googly eyes over the not quite googly bits. Very cool, man. I think I saw this when you were about a week into it. It was a while back. Um, beautiful blends, great color scheme, awesome base. Is it biting its own hat? It is, isn't it? That's gross. That's gross. Yeah, yeah, it's eating its own hand. Awesome work, though, man. Look at that non-metallic metal, that kind of chrome effect we've got going up the body. Absolutely beautiful. Cracking work, man. Cracking work. Literal butt shot. I really like what you've done with the base as well, because she's she's walking a very um, like one foot just in front of the other way, and on the base you've kind of crowded in the sides to help exaggerate that. And that's really good, very clever. Uh, inks, try the color scheme. This is one of the um, fine cast cryptic special characters, isn't it? Uh, oh, I can't remember what half of them are called. I know it's not Cesaras. So you've got like um, is that a sort of reddish salmon pink kind of thing going on? That's that's the normal crypto. Damn. I only ever see the one with the spider dude these days. I'm gonna convert one out of the uh, spare uh, overlord that I've got nice let's see it when there's some detail some more detail rather very cool what are you thinking for like the the staff and all that sort of stuff like what's your next step for your color scheme everyone hates fine cast Blue glow. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Nice. Pixel props. And a bike test paint whip. That's cool. It's definitely a bobber. Just gonna... I'm gonna be mean. Possibly, so bear with. Okay. So you've painted check marks on the front, as you can see here. And having painted literally, and I, I mean this, literally hundreds of goth orc boys for Games Workshop, um, Batman is working in Lenton. They're a sod. They, they genuinely are. And, sorry, I'm just playing with the camera. Uh, 
they take a lot more work than anyone actually thinks and rationally wants to put into a, a small part of a mini. Uh, one thing I would suggest, if you paint all of that, uh, were you here when we were doing the freehand, right? When we were doing this this bit, you were here for that, right? Yes, awesome, I thought so. On your checks, you've very clearly, and I've, you can see this from the, the red, painted black bits and then painted gray bits and highlighted the gray bits. Is that what happened? Okay. What I suggest that you do is paint the entire thing in gray. So just paint like a straight gray line across and around the uh, tire guard, I think it's really be called. Once that's all blocked in, then take some black paint, thin it right down, and just draw straight lines down it. Don't worry about a horizontal line, just draw straight lines down it. Come on now. Hey you. Yes, that face. Come and say hello to the internet. So once you've got your black lines in, no, decided that you're shy cat now. Okay. Once you get your black lines in, color those boxes in black. So instead of doing that horizontal line as well, just do halfway up and make a black line. And then you can use the corner of that one to do the next one up, and the corner of that one to do the next one down, the corner up, and so on. And that helps keep your squares like literally one next to the other, rather than having any separation where you've drawn thick black lines in. Then, the bits that are just dark grey, you can just highlight up with a little bit of grey, or just paint grey and just a little white at the top. And you've got a nice clean um, row of checker marks. It's a pain in the ass either way you do it, it really is. But that's probably the most foolproof way of doing it, because most of the work is kind of done there for you, you can't possibly miss any bits. How much of a pain in the ass was it for you trying to draw the one, two, three, fourth in from the right on the bottom and not touch any of the white with that black, which is what's ended up with that little bit of red in there? I imagine quite a lot. But overall, ah, wrong button. Uh, let's do that. I really like the bike. Great color scheme. Red ones go faster. This is none. Uh, back to Danny again to prove he painted his basic basis black. There you go, see? Much better. And it does look much better, right? All you see now is this horde of skeletons charging towards you. This is why you should all paint your base rooms black. I managed to convince Games Workshop to at least do dark grey, if not completely commit to the black. So... Twilight Walker. Yes, actually, I do. I 100% do. Because orcs, believe it or not, are all about the bling. Check marks of bling. Mr. T has his jewelry. Orcs have check marks and dags. Not dogs, dags. And dags are the triangular ones. In your face. Nappy. He's doing uh, more ogre stuff for Age of Sigma. This one looks like a butcher, I think. Uh, they were black for stream. Yeah, 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 right. Whatever, whatever. Yes, they use their teeth as cash. Except T W E F for orcs. Uh, it's part of my ogre miniatures list. I'm taking to the Tony this weekend. Next two days are going to be long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big time. Uh, Oil paints are absolutely like clutch for anything like this. With the like the bib thing that he's got going on, if you just get a uh, like a brown sort of burnt umber oil, splodge it all over there, and just wipe it off with a sponge. Done. Gloss it first. I know you've doctored your timestamp, so I don't need to see this. Uh, and this guy's cool. Is this one of the ones that rides like rhinoceroses and things?
Nice mate. Reel out the copper. Horns look awesome. <laughs> oh shit, yeah, there we go. Look at that. I think these are sick. I, I just think they're wonderful. It's so over the top. That the horns that will never ever fit through like any kind of uh, even wide open space really <laughs> like why not just why not awesome chief have fun and good luck at the tournament if I don't see you before uh, Twelve says already readed her eyes so she didn't look so shell shocked but could but have a wizard what? have a wizard thought I did for a friend okay that's cool We'll avoid the eyes. She's got walking eyes right now. Avoid those. Uh, good skin tones. The fact you've done makeup on her is actually really, really encouraging to see because normally it's just a case of well, we'll just pretend that it's just a normal skin tone and forget any semblance of uh, being a female from the neck up. So I really like that. The blue's awesome. The white's pretty good, kind of a dirty white, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, good work, Chief. And I really like the little design you've got in the base as well. Just a nice little extra feature to help it stand out. Is she holding a shake weight? Is, is that what the... Please tell me you've all seen that episode of South Park or no one will have a fucking clue what I'm talking about. Very sweet, mate. Very sweet. Uh, we normally do three, so we'll do this one. A bit more going on from here. Yeah, that's nice. You could maybe get a bit more shade into that. Uh, the recesses on the sword where it's got the sort of serrated uh, edge. Then... Uh, Ask Reaper, yeah. Huh. <laughs> nice one though. And here we go, Fezix. Uh, no stopping you, is there, Matt? All about those large scale minis. This is cool, I love that yellow. And the goggles. Very cool. But speaking of shell shocked eyes. This one's pretending to be the Undertaker, so I know you haven't got that far. Don't worry. That's cool, though, mate. Very cool. Beautiful blend. I really like those sort of Ray-Ban kind of uh, reflections. I know, mate. I know, I know. Looking good. Looking very good. Right, that is it. We are all whipped out now. So tonight, we repainted a shoulder pad because Nick is my friend. That's that's it. That's, that's all we got. Uh, I will carefully thin and layer a few coats of matte varnish over that rather than mask off part of the mini and give it the old uh, testers treatment. But I'm really happy with our Dark Angels symbol. It turned out pretty much how I expected it would. Uh, would have been nice to be a little crisper in places, but we're still learning freehand, which is why we went through uh, all the hassle. Which means, Nick, I can box this up for you tonight. Everything else is right there. Yeah, and send that out tomorrow. So that's another trip to the post office. Goody gumdrops. Thank you to everyone who stuck around for the stream. We've had loads of raids as well, which has been really amazing to see. Well, that's crazy talk. So thank you to everyone who brought their community here. Don't forget, Thursday night is the final stream of the month. Exclamation point win and exclamation point mystery in the chat to find out why you should all be here Thursday night. You could win £50 worth of hobby vouchers to the hobby stockist of your choice. Any hobby stockist. It's all good. Or you can win a mini painted by me. We're going to find somebody else to raid 
Let's see who we've got still online. Uh, Slow Fuse, we rate him a quite a bit. Uh, Jack of Clubs could do. Mad Love, haven't been there for a while. What's she painting? She's painting Chibi Eyes. We were just talking about eyes. Fuck it, let's do it. Let's go and see the captain paint some eyes. Raid will start after the credits have rolled, so stay tuned. Thanks to you all. We'll see you Thursday night. Peace out, everyone.